Holy frickin' crap, everybody. And welcome to another edition of the MacCast. I'm Monster Mac. Well, well, I always yell. I'm very excited when the MacCast goes down. I'm Monster Mac, as always, sitting on the side of me, looking fine and damn sexy. It's train number one. I, I thought you were talking about Trevor, dude. No, he, he's, he, he's just a beer guy. Whenever you need a beer, you pound on the table. He slides one over. Trainee, who do we got for this mad cast? Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, in the house, we have none other than East Coast Intensity, Jose Perez. That is I. Jose, I just want to, first off, want to congratulate you sore. for uh, being alive right now. <laughs> yeah, literally. I watched you get thrown off a balcony less than uh, 24 hours ago. And uh, you still agreed to do the Mac cast, so <laughs> I say I appreciate it, man. That's because you guys brought beer. <laughs> Much props, and I appreciate you bringing us into your lovely uh, Perez estate. Exactly. It's very wonderful. I'm very excited about this Mac cast. I wanted to drop an uh, a sh- a S-bomb in the open, because my catchphrase is usually holy freaking crap, but I'm pretty excited. <laughs> but out of respect for you and your home... I kept it. I didn't. I didn't drop the S bomb. You say whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Holy freaking shit, everybody! Welcome to the Matt Cast. We speak I'm two ver- languages in this house, <laughs> <laughs> and they swear in both of them. <laughs> um, we're gonna just kick it right off. My only Mac news is uh, I, I yeah. promise, I promised the fans that I would win the Spinny Spindle City Rumble. <laughs> <Spinny> Spindle. <laughs> that the was a match by himself. <laughs> yeah, the Spinny Spindle Rumble. I, I promised the fans I would win it, but I, I had a, a gear a problem you going on. Got a malfunction. A, a gear malfunction, yeah. exactly. The malfunction was you were wearing shitty Tajiri pants. Yeah, I, I thought that Tajiri pants would give me lightning fast like kicks. You know what I'm no, saying? No, no, you're not. You're but, not. You're uh, not Japanese, bro. Everything was hanging too loose in, inside. You know what I mean? I need my stuff nice and tight. Ah. So yeah, I was. Everything was too loose. You know what I mean? I didn't know what was going mm. on, and them damn bakers eliminated me. Man, them damn bakers. Oh. One of them, I think. One of the kids. Well, both the kids. Yeah, I'm not sure which kids. one. So, Jose, I want to start this off. Instead of going in, we usually kick it right to the how you broke in and, and yep. all that stuff. But mostly, I want to start this one off with talking about the last couple months leading into the retirement match with Brickhouse. Uh, huh. Where do I start? I mean, really. So when did the idea of you at Brickhouse at the PAL, when did that for come into play? For this match for this, Yeah, for this specific match. Because I know you guys had both been talking about, at the end of this year, retiring, and there was no real set plans of um, what you guys were going to do. Basically what happened is Brickhouse had already said he was going to retire by the end of the year. We, yeah. it, was, it was a known fact. Was, and everybody also knew that I was also getting out of it at the same time. Um, unfortunately for me, I retired technically like three or four different times in the last two and a half, three months. Okay, <laughs> because you had your last matches well, as you're doing the rounds. Well, yeah, I kind of, I kind of, un- I kind of made a tour out of it without intentionally making a tour out of <laughs> <Yeah>. it. <laughs> so it was kind of weird because I knew, I knew I had a show in Smithfield that I was going to do, and um, I, everybody was advertising all the shows with me on it as my last Their match, last and match, it right. wasn't that because I knew that I had one date particularly already set, right. which was supposed to be for the XWA. In the process of me leading into the XWA show, um, I end up getting uh, a booking for NEFW okay, in Chicopee yep. to work Dave Cole. Um, Dave Cole is somebody I've known for years and admired. Super him. talented guy. And he was in South America. Yep. Um, and things kind of happened. He had to come home, which was great because I was like, oh, there's an opportunity. So you got to work. I could yeah. work with Cole one last time. So NEFW gave me the opportunity to do that. So basically, I just... Made my retirement from XWA as my last XWA match. Right. And went to NEFW. So we move on to Brickhouse. <laughs> yeah. So prior the week, maybe a week or a couple of days prior to Thanksgiving, I get a Facebook message. And I look at the screen and he's like, have you retired yet? And it's Brickhouse. Yeah, I'm yeah. Like, oh, no. <laughs> what goes, do you got in mind, dude? He's like, he's like, call me. I'm like, oh, my, no, I know where this is going. So he quit, and I already, I've already made the determination that December seventh was my last official match. I was done. Yep, it was all yep. set. Me, Dave Cole. <laughs> I go, I talk to Brickhouse, and he's like, gives me the whole lowdown of what I want to do. And, you know, and I, he goes, I want you to be my last match. He goes, I've asked a few people, and they were like, excuse me, it's good beer. Oh, you know, um, <laughs> they had, you know, I've asked a few people, and they were like, if you're gonna do the PAL, it's got to be you and, you and Jose. Yeah, there's nobody else you could do that match with because of all the, the exactly. history that you guys have there. So I was like, and there's no way I could say no, even if I would already retired and was done, I would I would have made the match. It's Brickhouse. It's Brickhouse. I, I, there's no way I could say no. So I called the promoter and the other promoter, and I was like, listen, this is the deal. Um, we end up swapping some things around and working Bobby Ocean, Fit Music, yep. um, 
Anthony uh, Gangone. I can't remember pronounce his name correctly. Yeah. Um, which now turns into now we move on to the next one. Me and Brickhouse finally yeah. is what we wanted. Um, but it took a little bit, but there was no way I could pass up. And it's funny because I told Brickhouse, I was like, um, yeah, I got to tell my wife this one first. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I called my wife. It's going right to get after, a little nutty. Yeah, I'll get back to you in a minute. I called my wife up like, right after I got the phone with him. I'm like, um, hey, babe, I, I, I took another book. And she's like, no, you fucking did it. <laughs> no, you did. You're fucking dumb. Let me finish. Let me finish talking. She's I'm like, I couldn't say no. I gave her the door down. There's like a that dramatic pause. Yeah. Where, where you know that she yeah. understands. And she's like, okay, fine. I, you can't say no. It, I, I can understand that. That's fine. No more. <laughs> yeah, after that. <laughs> my wife was it, never, it, it, my wife was, when it came to wrestling, my wife never said no to me about it. But when I said I was going to retire already, she heard that one. She didn't want to hear it. <laughs> but it, uh, it, it took a little bit. But I mean, what really got us to this point were, wow. 15 plus years of beating the hell out of each other. <laughs> yeah, and I've seen a lot of those fights where, uh, I mean, even just 2006, I believe it was, was one of your last ones. Yeah, the last time that I actually wrestled the PAL was actually with Brickhouse Baker in a no rule barbed wire match. It's the first time the no rule barbed wire match was done in Fort Rilla. Which was insanity. It was, it was I was there crazy. at that show. You, I had just came in from another booking. I had a double booking that night. And I just came in from Boston. <laughs> That's a hell of a night to have a double booking. I man. drove all the way from Boston. And when I got there, they were just setting up the barbed wire. That's how yeah. fast yeah. I had to get down there. And um, people talk about that match to this day. They, they're still, it's one of the, the, the big matches that ever happened in that building. So it was crazy. It was definitely crazy. So they okay. fucked up. We've done some shows with you before. We've done some shows with Brickhouse before. I want to say last night when you guys were in the locker room, it was a totally different. Like Brickhouse came in and he was still kind of Brickhouse. Mm-hmm. And you know, I, I at one point I was <laughs> talking to David, and uh, he said something. And he, he pointed at his dad. He's like, "Look at him!" And Brickhouse is sitting there, just like not yelling at some like newer mm-hmm. kid, but like explain it to him. Like, look, don't fix your tights when you're selling it. And he's like, yeah. <laughs> kind of like laying into him and stuff. And I'm like, Oh, that's brick house. But once intermission hit, it was like a, a flip was sw- a, flip a switch. switch. We, um, we both definitely, um, changed gears around, uh, midway through the, through the, the night, spindle. Yeah. And, and once intermission hit, once we, once it's pretty much once we got into our gear, yeah. it was, uh, we knew it was time. We knew it was time. We had, you know, it's just you, you get yourself in that mindset. I drove, I drove to the show by myself, um, so it gave me a good half hour just of some quiet time. I put some heavy music on and just kind of thought about things, and then just real, and then realized it's like, wow, me and Brickhouse have done so many firsts together. Like he was my first cage match. Yep. Uh, I remember getting to a building in Attleboro, and and again, I get that, <laughs> I get that hand on the shoulder, and it's like, uh, Jose, we need to talk to him. He goes, uh, it's gonna be you and Brickhouse tonight. I'm like, all right, great. Yeah. And uh, because we're gonna put you guys in the cage to open, I'm like, what? To, to open? <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> I'm like, sure. Let's go at it. Screw it. And uh, I think that's pretty much what started it. I mean, Brickos was always known to be a wrestler's wrestler. Yeah. Um, and and I pushed him to an entirely different avenue by doing things he would normally not do with other people. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Bittersweet. <clears throat> now, uh, last night was amazing. Like I was so very uh, happy and uh, appreciated um, of being a part of the show, and uh, I was just happy that I, I could actually be a part of it and be in the locker room with you guys. Um, now, for you personally, uh, after it was all said and done and the, the final bell rung, were you satisfied of how you uh, pretty much left the business? Um, I'm com- I'm completely happy. I'm completely happy that I was able to walk out of it. Because yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was horrified myself. I knew there was a problem when I looked down and there was blood flowing out of my head and I couldn't stop it. Like, it was just pouring. So, to know I was able to walk out of there and um, with my head held high and everybody was out there and, and appreciated and enjoyed it. Um, and, def- to, and to def- have Eugenio there. and, and it, it, was, it was the way it needed to be. I thought it was a pretty classy on uh, Top Rope's part. Steve Ricard and... The, you know the other bookers and uh, Joe to come down and give you guys those like plaques. I, I didn't they, know that was coming. That was that was um, very unexpected. And I told Steve this last night that for me, kind of the the cherry on top had to be when um, Steve got out there and publicly said how I was the one that got the, the, yeah, the what, position what, what he's in. The, now. What was the story behind that? Yeah, the position. Well, basically, what happened was when Joe Eugenie used to run 
um, Yankee Pro at the time, yeah. Joe was very, very against new people in his building or, or in anywhere around his his product. Yeah, he was very he very he was, he was the epitome of K Fay for certain things. Yeah, and um, Steve Ricard was at the time. Steve Ricard at the time was like like a like a picture Dave. Okay, or or, uh, or Nate. They okay. would be, we'd be the guy out there doing the pictures and stuff like that. Well, at that time he was doing the video stuff, so he would be, he'd be the guy. Look like at Chris I, Pyro back in the day. Yeah, yeah. He was doing the film. He, he, no, no. But he, the thing is, is he would go out. Steve Ricard used to work for another promotion for Tony Rumble. Okay. And he would go out there and he'd videotape guys' matches and he would collect a few. Oh, um, kind of along the lines what um, uh, Scott Ed- Edison did. Okay. He'll tape a few matches and if you want, you just you know throw him a couple bucks and he'll, yeah, he'll, he'll make throw a copy. Yeah. So that's what Steve used to do. Um, Steve worked. For, uh, for Tony for a while And then I started running shows With Tony up there And I was like Wow I can really use you To record some of my stuff So I brought him up Yeah I said just come out And record one of my matches One he was Oh yeah great 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 I get up there And Joe flipped out <laughs> Joe flipped out Who the fuck is this kid Get him the fuck out of here And I'm like Joe He's just here to record my match That's it He's not gonna do nothing <laughs> else he's, he's gonna sit in the corner He's not gonna do nothing Record my match He's all done He's like I, As soon as he's done Get him the fuck out of here I'm like oh, God. <laughs> so he records my show And then we have another show I bring him back again I'm like just come on He records He goes I told you I don't want I said Joe he's just taping my match bro <laughs> He's not taping Because Joe was very Joe was very um, anti-TV Yeah yeah his, his, his theory behind it was Why would I give you my product for free You know what I'm saying If, if you're supposed to come down If, to you're, if show, I want you yeah. to come and pay for it Why am I going to give it to you for free So right. I'm not going to put that on TV So that was his fear behind it He goes So Here's this kid with a video camera taping his product. The one is like, I don't want this. Is you gotta remember, this is before YouTube and like that. Right, right. So he's like, no. So I just, I just kept bringing him down, bringing him down, bringing him down. And um, after a while, he just, him and Joe started talking. They got friendly with each other. He was yeah. starting to do more work for him. Um, and it just kind of progressed from that point until the, to the point where I was like, holy shit, he just bought the company. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so how did that happen? He pretty so he got in there by me bringing him to the show and just. You know, just I kind of force keeping him, him around. Joe. I kind of force fed him, yeah. And then and Joe just kind of, just you know, he just kind of kept him along. Not that, not that you know, Steve was like kissing his ass and like that because I don't know, but right, right. You know, he just kept him around. It just culminated to that point, and at some point, Steve decided to buy the company when Joe decided to leave. Yeah. You know, which is good because it still kept it still kept that avenue of independent wrestling going in Fall River, especially in that building. Um, that would have been it would have been a big void. If yeah, if there was you know, no when, when Tony Rumble Yankee when, or yeah, top rope exactly when Tony Rumble died, it, it, it kind of put a big void New England wrestling in, in, in New England general, wrestling, yeah. and um, at that point, that's when you know people kind of scattered and went and did their own type of things. Yep. Tried to like NECW kind of emerged after that, you know. And but Yankee and Joe was has been there for thirty plus years. Yeah, you know, so they were they they still had their mainstay. So the good thing is that. Um, Steve took that over and, and kept it going. Whether he made money or it wasn't, he was still trying to produce something, yeah. product out of it. So I'll you know I'll take off my hat if I had one to, yeah, to him for that. <laughs> but for him to say that last night kind of was, was kind of cool because I would go around telling people like you know I put Steve there, you know and I right. don't think he I don't think he'd ever admit that, but you know he the, he knows that he I put knows him there and I know and he's like well you know and he said he goes no I've told people that you put me in. I go I've never had, I goes I've never hid behind that. I'm like oh. Well, I don't, know. I don't feel like a jerk. So, did, did you did you guys know that everybody was going to come to the ringside last night, bang on the mat, and all that stuff? No, I'm sure, the I, idea was there. Like, no, no, that that's a, that's a complete shoot. I had no idea, but no. you you kind of expect that to happen, right? That kind of it's that just usually happens, kinda, that's the kind of respect that would normally would happen. Yeah. But um, they all came out. It was it was cool to see. It was, it was great to see guys like like Teddy and um, uh, the ladies okay. man. Yeah, I was going to say, Gregory Edwards got involved yeah. in, in the match, actually yeah. helped Brickhouse carry out the uh, the barbed wire board. Oh, was that him? Yeah, yeah, Ooh, he that, came that out. Conniving little prick. I thought it was pretty humorous. One of them went up the stairs, the other one stayed on the floor. They couldn't get the, <laughs> the board in the ring. I was it's like, oh, you yeah. should just slid it. You know, well, guys like him, guys like, like Vinny. Yeah. Um, it's weird. I'm showing my age, but it's like those guys used to sit in the audience and watch me in Brickhouse. Right. And to see them grow, I mean, Vinny was doing a – you know, a Nero, he was doing his Nero game, which is pretty much a Randy Orton ripoff. And right. He was getting a, a lot of flack for it, for doing it. And uh, he he got to the point where he was just, he was getting discouraged with the business. And I remember my breakouts, I remember I had talking to him and I was like, you just need to get Change out of Change your that. deal, yeah. Stop doing the stuff you're seeing on TV. Become yourself. I said, because then you're doing, and look at him now, years later. Yeah, he kind of. Now he's, you know, he's doing ROH and stuff like that. 
you know, he's more of an extension of the real guy that he exactly. is. Exactly, that, that artsy exactly. kind of. It it, it it takes progression. Another one I like to throw out is uh is Anthony Stone. Yep. Um, uh, he was there. Is it in a few feet? He in front was of there. Us he had we contact me. Said he goes, he goes. I'm, there's no way I'm not going to be there. Uh, Stone was another one that um he he was kind of. I think he's a great talent for his size and. He can move well, I think, but he was stuck in a rut when he was doing that Bloodstone yep. type, you know, name that he had. And he, I remember him pulling me up over in Fairhaven. He's like, "Hey, Jose, I got a question for you." He goes, "What do I need to do to kind of break out? Just do something." I'm like, "He was honestly." I said, "Don't take this the wrong way." I said, "Change your name. It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> your fucking name sucks." I said, "You look. You say Bloodstone. I'm expecting some guy with face paint on. I'm, a, right, I'm, a, yeah, like I'm a, expecting a Brandon Webb. Right. You okay. Know, yeah. You know, that type saying. of." Yeah. You know the devil's reject type of situation. Not, not this, not this dude who comes out with yeah, abs. Yeah, and exactly. I'm like, hair. I looked at him like, and he at that time he didn't have a beard. And he was all clean shaven. Yeah, and yeah. I'm like, I just can't, I don't buy it. Yeah, you're not coming out with a you know a cloak or anything like that. You're not. You're coming up all Blood fired stone. up. Yeah. Like I just don't buy it. And then that's when he decided switch to switch yep. And then it, it completely changed his demeanor and the way he his thought process yeah. was. Um, and it's funny because he just told me about that not that long ago. <laughs> So man, I, I want to say the match was uh, beer man. The Fast. match was totally um, not a dis- disappointment at all. It was incredible. Yeah, it's the same. you can hear. It. <laughs> match was incredible. You guys tore the roof off the building. It was the Tried most to, literally <laughs> the most over match I've heard in that building in years. Like, the people were not quiet at all the whole match. No, especially the parents and the friends. Apparently, lobby. some <laughs> parents were flipping out. Cause she I'm got gonna a sue you. Control. I'm gonna punch the promoter in the face. I, I seen some babies crying personally myself. But. He bled but, on my shoe. <laughs> it, it was just funny as that. we walked. Uh, down the stairs from the balcony, there's just your blood trickled all the way down. All the way up. Trickled. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Oh, was man, bad. it was intense. Um, so, yeah, definitely an awesome match. Uh, I'm sure you went out the way you wanted to go. It's, um, the, way I ne- it's the way it needed to happen. Um, it there got was a-, a lot of wrestling going on that night, as it was. So, yeah. it, it's for us to just go out and have a wrestling match, which I know I can have a wrestling, good wrestling match with Brickhouse any day of the week, but yeah. we... we I felt that we owed it to the crowd. With the history so. that you guys have. Of well, not even the history, because even if it would have been just two veterans finishing it off, with no history. Yeah. I, I feel with with talent like like Vinny Marsalia and, and, and uh, Handsome Johnny and, and the Wingmen and whatnot. Um, I, I I felt that we owed it to the to the fans to give them that. Holy shit! What did we just see? Yeah, and it certainly when thing. you guys went not off the taking anything away from anybody else. <laughs> yeah. No, please, you know I'm not taking nothing away from no, anybody no, else. No, no, of course not. But I think it's it's I have a, on a different side. I have a, a firm belief that there has to be a mixture of a lot of different things on the show. Yeah. To make people stay from start to finish, and I think that art of the business is is missed and lost. Because now in the age of YouTube and whatnot, everybody's about let me what's what's gonna what's gonna that give quick. me what's gonna give me that 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 next like or the next subscriber you know that and it's it's you're worried about the people that are watching on, on that but not the people that are paying to see the show you. yeah you know what I'm saying and I don't care if you're the first match or the main event that first match that mid match and that main event are all important to each other. Yeah. Regardless if that first one has to do anything with the last one, there has to be a roller coaster. To build flow. the show. There has to Ups be. Ups and downs. If that... Hey, Dee, are you leaving? Bye, baby. <laughs> That's my daughter. She's leaving. You going what? You buying the car? Uh oh. You ever have, you ever, <laughs> my daughter's 18. You ever have like, <laughs> one of these conversations where, like, randomly? Uh, Steve Lango randomly showed up one time during the podcast. <laughs> so we had to, like, hit You gotta pause. put gas in the car, and you're on, <laughs> and you're being recorded. So you're putting gas in the car, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. There's no gas in the car. I didn't put gas in the car. <laughs> Bye. Be careful. Okay, anyway. Um, roller coaster rides in yeah. professional wrestling. <laughs> There, there isn't any. Um, a lot of guys just go out there and they just try to get their rocks off and do what they feel. They, you know, GYSI, get your shit in. Yeah, it's just like, oh, I got 15 minutes. All right, I'm going to do every WrestleMania finish from WrestleMania <laughs> fucking nine. You know, just, just, and, and I think it's, nine was a, was a shitty WrestleMania. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, I just, <laughs> you know, I think that was the one with like the, um, <laughs> the elephants and yeah. <laughs> the, 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 Bobby Heenan on a camel. Right, poor choice. Just, it's, it's just, it's, <laughs> You know, but it, it's 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 sad, and it's and it's nothing against it's it's not necessarily against the wrestlers doing it because it also be, falls on the on the promoter, promoter booker yeah. aspect of it, where I know of the way I was taught when I look at the card, I'm like, oh, Jose, where am I? I'm on the card, or I'm number three. 
All right, so who's before me and who's after me and what's the main? So I knew that, all right, you know what? I know this next match is going to be holy shit hot. Because yeah. Because they've been building for this type of match. Maybe it's the last match before intermission. And it knows going to be hot. So I'm not going to try to be to that. To do a thousand high spots. I'm not because then what does that do for that first half of the show? Because if I do that, the people are not going to care for that. And intermission, they're going to leave. Because they just blew them out of the water with the first one. So what do you do? You 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 give them a little a little bit. You give them a little bit to like you and want you, but you give them enough so that they will like and want the guys that are following you. Right. And that part of wrestling is gone. It's not. It, it, you sit down. Next time you go to a show, just sit down and watch the show. Don't watch the matches. Watch the show. Yeah. And see how the flow of a show goes. It doesn't happen like that anymore. Now it's you'll have you'll have maybe. Promo, match, match, promo, match, intermission, match, match, finish. Yeah. Done. There's no, there's no, it's just, here you go, you're force fed it. Now, what happens right after intermission? A good portion of your crowd leaves. Right, yeah, people why stop is, wandering around. As quiet. a booker, promoter, why does the crowd leave? Right. And I, I don't understand why nobody grasped the concept of why these people are leaving. They're leaving because you blew them out of the water from the fucking start, and they don't care that you have Tito Santana or Hulk Hogan on the end of your show. <laughs> you just killed them. They just seen yeah everything just, they could see. There's nothing else to do. I mean, fine, you let, let you know let somebody stick a, you know stick a dynamite in their ass. <laughs> you know that's why I felt last night we needed to do just that little bit. I gave them a little bit of wrestling with for the fans that knew who we were and knew our history. I wore my mask last Which night. Which I think was all three three thirty of the people in the tent. Yeah, I mean I ha- I gave them a little bit of our history with me wrestling as Diablo for a little yeah. bit. And we did a simple international and um I thought it was prudent for what we had to do with that. Yeah. And then once I took the mask off then I knew that was the next step. So we'd have that little bit of wrestling, and then we added that little bit of ha ha to it. We did yeah, the crisscross the cross and the spot, and, yeah. which, by the way, was great. I just laughed my ass. The crisscross spot was over it, as it, a it mother was man. Funny, it was and, then, <laughs> and then we added, then we added that next element of going yeah. a little extreme with it to give that person that likes the wrestling but also likes the hardcore aspect of it. We gave them, the, so we gave them a lot of different things. In a, a lot of different, it was a sensory overload. You give them a lot of different things and one thing to make them appreciate what it was. It wasn't just two guys going out and just throwing each other into cans and right. Hitting each other. <laughs> there was you a know? reason behind. In it. In fact, I don't think we hit each other with anything. Uh, oh, we, maybe the chain. chain maybe, the chain. Maybe, yeah. Maybe the chain. chain. Maybe the chain. You know, because that's what I, that's, that's how I popped him one. Yeah. But outside of that, any other time, you usually see chairs flying around. Right. Right. This and that. I didn't. We didn't have any of that going on. You know, it's just it's that's part. That's also part of the reason why I kind of got out of the business because it's just uh, between some of the politics and the way it's being, and things are being done. It's, yeah, it's it's disconcerting and kind of sad for me. Is that a lot of? We'll get into to more of the how to build the show stuff when we talk more about you running booking shows and then running your own show yep. FSW and all mm-hmm. that later on. But before we get into that stuff, I want to know, Jose, how did you get your break? What was the the, the break into the biz? Um, I actually crawled in the window of a promoter's house because he he uh, he left my keys in his house. Okay. <laughs> um, so and the promoter ended up coming. No, that's a lie. Is this <laughs> a little weird? That's a little, little <laughs> weird. That's a lie. <laughs> that was a stereotypical Puerto Rican yeah. moving around <laughs> his house. Break? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Um, I actually started with a friend of mine. Um, I was at work one day, and one of the guys at work was a friend of mine. He. Uh, he said, hey, you got to come down and check me out. I'm wrestling in this this, this church. I'm like, you're wrestling at a church? It's already a this, great... This is, <laughs> this is already greatly bad. I mean, <laughs> this is going to be I fucking certainly, epic. I certainly want to see oh, this. No, it's nothing crazy. You know, we just, just a bunch of you know, a bunch of kids just get together, have a good time. I'm like, all right. It was a, it was a backyard thing. So I go down. It was, it was, it was Power League. That's my first uh, thing was when I started. was okay. Power League wrestling. Yeah. Um, and it was inside of like a... <laughs> Four by four, <laughs> like smallest styrofoam and, 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 and clothesline ring, <laughs> and and I was like, this is awesome, this is so much fun. And I threw a mask on it, yeah. Just bummed. I had no no training, no nothing. It was just, just went out there and had some fun. We had some fun with it, and then um, I did that for a little, you know, short, not nothing crazy. But um, in Rhode Island, we have public access, and I remember used to watching so um, NEWA, the NEWA. Okay, and it was like guys like Gino Giovanni and uh, Reverend Chain Link and Studley Steve Stallion, which is a prick. <laughs> Screw I'm you, gonna tag, Studley I'm going to tag him this because we had a big <laughs> conversation with him the other day. <laughs> Studley Steve, I have no problem with you. I think you're a wonderful guy. Uh, <laughs> Just in case he's listening, <laughs> you're obviously scared of him. I, I, I don't know if Max ever met him. I've never heard of him before. <laughs> 
<laughs> so have a lot of so yeah, nobody else either. Just in case. <laughs> so you're watching the uh, NEWA on public access. N- NEWA. You're, you're doing the they, power league stuff for fun. Yeah, kind of and there was one character that I wanted just to beat the whole hell shit out of. That was Gino Giovanni. I was like, I got the kid was like 15 at the time. Yeah. I just I started wrestling. I started doing this when I was like 21. So you, no, I don't want to say late, but it's a little yeah, bit later for, on. For like, a guy starting on the you business. a little more mature yeah, than exactly. most people. He, this kid was like 15, 16. Just, <laughs> so I would have definitely got arrested. Yeah, but I sure. didn't know. I didn't know the business from Adam Eve. I, I was like, right. uh, if I'm gonna get, in, I'm gonna kill this kid. That's all I can. Yeah. He was just he he played it so well that you just wanted Even to back then. beat the shit out of this guy. <laughs> um. So what happened was, ironically enough, my wife was going to school uh, for a training purpose, and she ran into um, a gentleman by the name of Half Nelson. Um, sorry, Tiny the Terrible. Okay. Uh, little, yeah, anyway, just Tiny the Terrible. A little, people, people, little man, a yeah, little wrestler. A little man, a little prick, I should say. <laughs> I feel like Jose is going to be throwing a little there's a lot, there's a lot of There's a lot of, a lot prick, of pricks, there's a lot of pricks in his business, let me tell you. But I, I, end up meet, I end up meeting up with him. She met up with him. And we knew the she knew that he wrestled on any other way. Yeah. Um, so she's like, Oh, you know, my husband wrestles, blah blah blah. He's like, Really? We met up and I showed him my mask. At that time I already had my mask. I was going to so name I was going to name the Crypt Keeper. Okay, you were the Crypt Keeper, okay. So uh he came to the house one day and uh, I met him and then I met um uh, his real name's Anthony Rufo, but he was doing uh, like a Dambula gimmick okay. and all other crazy stuff. Um, big guy. Um so we got together, did some videos and whatnot. We went to Rock D'Alessandro and presented. Like, hey, we got this new guy that wants to come in and work out. You know, want to want to try. And I met up like Wolverine and all these guys, but still did not meet Gino. Yeah. They're like, so it's like after my, I don't know, my third meeting, he's like, "Why do you want to wrestle for the NWA?" I said, "Honestly, I want to beat the shit out of Gio Gino <laughs> I really just want to beat the shit out of him." He's like, really? Because you're not gonna wrestle. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not gonna happen. That's not gonna happen. So I end up I end up wrestling. I remember. <laughs> I remember sitting in the office. It was Rock Del Sanjo, myself, Tiny the Terrible, uh, and and we're watching a video of mine from Power League. Again, there's no wrestling ring. This is just it's you know, the, the infant stage of Power League wrestling. Right? Yeah, just the very so beginning. So we're showing it. At that time, I think I learned. At, by that time, I think I learned what an arm drag was, a clothesline, and a forearm. Now and maybe who, a kick. Who, who's helping you learn these things? At, at that point, nobody. Had. So it's just I, it was just you're I just was learning up from all on your own, and I was just picking things it. I could find things. Um, and then here comes again, Stully Steve Stallion. Yeah, and Stully Steve because he was on TV, people know him because it's Stully Steve. Yeah, and he's like, oh, what the fuck are we watching? He's looking at the TV. We're just standing, and, I, and I'm taller than Steve. Yeah, so I'm standing, we're looking. He's like, ah, fuck. He's like, who the fuck is this guy? This fucking guy's a shit bag. And then he's like, hey, is that you? He's <laughs> like, yeah. I'm like, yeah. He's like, ah, oh, you know who I am? No. <laughs> Uh, well, I'm Stully Steve Stallion. I'm the NEWA NDW- heavyweight champion. Okay. <laughs> and? All right, Rock, I got to go. <laughs> he just fucking leaves. <laughs> he just leaves. He shut, he shut over in his flunky dragons with him. He just, they just walk. They just leave and walk away. It was great. I was just like. So he just pretty much showed up to pimp on the new guys. And yeah, he, just, he walks in. He, he, oh, he walks in all the time just to go talk to Rock and whatnot. Yeah, trying to yeah. get him money. But he walks in. He, see, he, he got that, like, <laughs> that ego drop. And he's like, uh. I'm gonna go. So I'm sure he probably went. I'm sure he probably went back to the gym and like pumped iron for like next two and a half hours. But he always looked bloated, like he was like, yeah. like, like what a kid. Just came out of that Chinese yeah. buffet. Yeah. <laughs> so um, you you officially training now? Yeah. At that time they had um, I don't know if you call it training, but I mean we trained with get-togethers. Uh, yeah, we had like grappling get-togethers. We got together with um, uh, Wolverine was like kind of like their head type trainer type deal. Um, and then it was no. when I got my first encounter with Bad Boy Billy Black. Was it once a week? Um, it's once whenever the gym was open. I see. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those things. We can have the gym open. We can have the gym open three, four, five, six days a week, yeah. or we can have it once a month. It depends. Yeah. If, it depends if Rock could find the keys or pay the bill. Yeah. <laughs> so now, that's pretty much how it worked. But they weren't running shows yet. Um, they no, they still they ran shows. They ran shows. Um. Almost pretty much once a month, pretty much. And they were like the only ones that were really running school, high school. At that time, um, high schools were really big about getting them in there to, make, to raise money and whatnot, yeah. um, which is hard nowadays. So nobody uh, wants a zero, high school yeah, show Yeah, zero tolerance. It's, it's really hard nowadays. But back then, he used to run a lot of schools. He used to run like Taunton and Smithfield and West Warwick, which we got banned at West Warwick. Because of crazy shit. Yeah, because of crazy shit, yeah. which unfortunately <laughs> I was involved in. 
Of course, Jose. <laughs> <laughs> but um, they, we were, you know, we ran on. Stood the, we still did that. Um, that's actually training. There is when I actually blew my shoulder out, my right shoulder. I took a clothesline bump from Wolverine. I was practicing back bumps. I just took a clothesline bump and landed on my shoulder the wrong way, and it was instant. I tore, just, the, I tore the ligaments in my shoulder. It was instant. Arm to the throat. It was just, I was just stuck there. So I remember taking. <laughs> I remember crying like a baby. Yeah, just, just I cried weeping. like I didn't know what was going on. And um, they take us to the ER, which is right up the block. And we used to have a place in Johnson, Rhode Island. It was like behind a McDonald's. So I remember going. I remember going to the place to the, to the ER. And I'm sitting on the gurney and I'm laying there. And I'm like, this sucks. <laughs> so all of a sudden, there's these three guys come walking from baseball from a softball game. And I'm like, all right. And then one guy's just like writhing in pain. He's like, oh, man, his shoulder's like, like on the floor. His arm's like yeah, on the floor. Yeah, yeah, just hanging there. And I'm like, oh, that guy's fucked. <laughs> so we're laying, I'm laying on the gurney. It's like an hour goes by. All of a sudden, it's like, yeah, there he's in the gurney next to me. I can hear the nurse. is like, all right. And there's like nurse and like a whole bunch of orderlies and whatnot. And they hold him down. He's like, all right, get ready. One, two, pop. You hear, oh, and the guy passes out for a second. They pop the shoulder back in. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, oh, that's a, that must suck. <laughs> And I'm like, all right, well, I, I feel good. Uh, the doctor's walking. He goes, oh no. I said, that guy showed the pop up. He goes, oh yeah. He goes, oh, I feel, I feel better now. You know, I feel better. It's yeah. not me. He goes, no, yours is worse. I'm like, what? Does that really mean worse? What do you mean worse? He goes, yeah, you took you. You would have rather had popped your shoulder than take the ligaments out of your shoulder. I said, because you're gonna be in sling for about a month and a half. Oh, so and I didn't bother. I just screwed. And like two weeks later, I was in yeah, a sling for like a week. A week after that, I took the sling off because we were going to wrestle a big show in Smithfield High. Yeah, and you I was didn't like, want to yeah, miss that. I'm like, no, oh, my arm's fine. It was dangling and whatnot. To this day, I still got a hump in my shoulder. From, from, from that, that injury. It never, it never healed correctly. It was just like that type of shit. I got a text message. It was a text message. So you're working for the NEWA. Yep. When, what, when did you finally meet Gino? Uh, well, I mean, I met Gino... Before through the whole, that. Through the whole, yeah, through yeah. the whole time being there, but I never got. I don't think I ever actually got in the ring with him until it was years later. Like yeah. being there and no, it took a while before I got in the ring with him. You know, but by that time I liked him. I didn't want to kill him though. Yeah, I was gonna. I was say, like, it just completely destroyed. They would have had. They would have made money with that beating. But at that s- point, it didn't matter. I was gonna say when you first started to get to know him and you met him and stuff, you must have been thrown back of how nice he is. He's a, he's a, a, a nice guy. He Gino is the uh, the epitome of a light switch. Yeah. He knows. <laughs> He exactly. He's he's the nicest kid you'll ever meet, and the second you need to be, have him flip, he can flip, and he can you can instantly want to just smack him one. <laughs> he's the only person I know that you instinctively just want to beat the shit on the second he talks to you as a heel. It's instant. He doesn't have to wrestle. He doesn't do nothing. Just, just run his mouth and just give that little smirk he does. Just I just not like, I want to go kick, his, kick him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> so. uh what would you consider your actual first match? Whew. Um, I would have my first match that I felt that I really was doing something that meant anything. I mean, it had to be me and TJ, uh, probably wrestling with TJ. With TJ, it's like when I kind of really started wanting to do more and whatnot. And that's when I, that's when I started seeing any different way. But then TJ was TJ. TJ Riggs has been wrestling longer than I have. Yeah, and um. He had always, TJ always had that wanted to learn more, wanted to learn more, wanted to learn more. And as, like I, we weren't really trained, formally trained by yeah. anybody per se at that time. And um, I mean, I didn't start getting any kind of formal training until years later when I actually stepped into Yankee and uh, met Savannah Souza. Yeah. Is when I started getting my formal training. So, how much time did you actually spend working for like PLW and, and NEWA? When I was in the NWA, I, I thought it was I thought it was NEWA. WWF, <laughs> that, like the next step up. That was it. I'm going from here to there. Um, I didn't. I didn't find out about other indies until I started meeting and talking to other guys. Okay. And finding out that it was like, holy shit, there was a lot of stuff. So now was it just because a lot of just any W guys just worked any WA and no, like no, they didn't really they bring really in know, other, they really branch other people. Out, but then, yeah. So a couple of the guys started branching out, and I started finding out more. And my first official, um, what I consider break into the indies. Was at Champ Arena, okay. and uh, actually I wrestled under for um, uh, Cal, uh, Mulligan and Calhoun. No, what's oh, his name? Okay, uh, Sergeant uh, Sergeant Maldoon. Yes, yeah. I get the names confused. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> With him and Big City Mike up there, and they were running in Newberry, right? No, no, they were running at Salisbury Beach. Okay, okay, a place yeah, called yeah. Champs Arena, 
Um, and that's when I got like my first taste of like, holy shit, this is indie wrestling. They got a ring, a building, and fourteen fans. This is this is this, this was is it big that time. bad? Like, oh yeah, it was it was it's, it's it was on the boardwalk in the middle of the night, you know, and nobody was nobody came. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, but that's when I started experiencing more things. In NWA, I experienced guys like you know, we had Bam Bam, we had the model Rick Mattel, and yeah. we had all these old time guys come in. It was great. It was great because I got the I picked their brains and whatnot. Um, then I got in and I started. I got some some training with the Eliminators that just they had just came back from Japan. Okay. So I was able to get some training time with them, some one on one time with them. And because they were working with Maldoon. Yeah, they came in and do the same room. Maldoon just, yeah. talking about bringing in the Eliminators. Yep. They had came in, they were doing some work with them and whatnot. And um, at that time, it was an influx from the NWA guys. So it was myself, it was the, myself, the uh, Tiny the Terrible, um, Dambula. Um, Steve Stallion, Dragonfly, like we all from you know we all kind of morphed that way and started going that way, and then yep. then other guys started popping up like Kyle Storm and, and Matt West, you know, and, uh, Matt and Kyle Storm, I should say. Yep. They all started making their way out and doing their thing. So it, it was like a, a big influx of guys from the same group that went on and just started branching onto the scene. We all kind of hit the same areas almost at the same time, per right. se. Almost as a, a crew of of guys all mm-hmm. together. Well, Unintentionally, it just happens. Like one with this one, we kind of all just kind of, you know. And then we all started realizing, wow, this this is actually like a whole bunch of other stuff that we actually wrestle at. Yeah, this is great. Oh wait, and we're gonna get paid. So, this whoa, is this whoa. is amazing. Now you were saying you went from doing like not actual trainings, like guys just helping you guys helping each other out. What yeah, because do? I mean, at that time there was really nobody that was really there was. Um, Killer Kowalski had a school up in Malden, right? Um, but I didn't know anything about that, so I knew that the guys I was working with were pretty much there longer than I was so I kind of learned what I could from there and whatever I see on TV I try right. to try to practice it and work that way so I, I was always I always say I was I was self-taught per se until yeah. I got in there with like again Savannah Susan and started working with you know top name talent yeah. um, but uh, on, a, on a different note with, with Salisbury it's a funny story <laughs> we, we were, I, I was just going to tell you like what was the, the difference between like training with your friends and picking up on the little things like that to being in there with like Perry Saturn and Psychology, and John Cronus. Like, psychology, and that was the big what, what meant, like, what meant, what, what it meant to put something where it belongs. So they, they, they weren't, they weren't drilling moves into your head or anything. No, like no, that. we it was actually, like how we, we, we I, I kind of just picked them at. It wasn't like a like a full training session, right? Just kind of, yeah, you, you know, picking but, their um, brains at but shows. it was a good few hours of of going kind of back and forth. I was able to get in there, work with them a little bit, and, yeah. and you know, kind of. You know when, like, or when's a power bomb supposed to go in? You know, yeah. <laughs> you know. Okay. Like I shouldn't power bomb right away yeah, in like, the match. No, yeah, right. you don't want to power bomb. So you find out real quick. You don't want to power some power bomb somebody as soon as you lock up. Yeah, that's probably a bad idea. You're pretty sure you're gonna get Perry to punch you in the face. <laughs> um, but it was funny. We we did a show up there at the gym, and uh, my wife. I didn't have a driver's license, so my wife took me everywhere. That's how yeah, my wife. Yeah. That's why my wife walks into a show. She's got more miles. She, than you. Yeah, she she she's like because one of the boys, like they there's there's a there's a, in this business there's the thing where you shake you you're supposed to shake everybody's hand. Right. The day you get to a building, you get to a building, you shake everybody's hand because you're trying to get to the promoter. That's the promoter of the book yeah. are the first people you want to get. Shake everybody's hand on the way to there, and then everybody else. Yeah. You know, if everybody else is before the promoter, get into them, and that's fine. But your idea is to get to the promoter. So she would walk in, and, and people were like, hey, Mrs. Perez, how you doing? I'm like, I'm like fuck her, I'm standing right here. Yeah, it's like, you're like, skipping right like, over really, me. Really, I'm like looking at her like, you're kidding me, right? But whatever. But um, so we go to the show, and it's my, we get to the show, we're doing the thing. And at the time, it was, um, you know, the, all the, the regular guys were up there, and we were going to stay at Hampton Beach. Yeah. So a lot of the guys at the shows would go to Rip Morrison's house and get all just hammered. We'd get, like, parlayed. So Dragonfly, uh, Steve Stanley, Dragonfly, and the Midgets were like, oh, we're going to Rip Morrison's house. We're going to, I'm like, well, Aunt, I said, I got a two-bedroom house on Hampton Beach yeah, with yeah. a nice hot shower and everything else. So now I'm going there. He's like, I'm going, through, I'm going to the hotel. And I said, you're more than welcome. Just split the cost. He's like, mm, uh, okay. Okay, I'm, I'm going to go with you guys. We'll go. So go there. You know, we, we take showers. Oh, not together. Just yeah, of course, of course. Together. But, you know, we all get relaxed. It was great because we was just having a nice, easy night one night. I went to get a sandwich. I lost getting a sandwich. That's another story for another day. <laughs> they laugh at me to this day about it. So we get to the building the next day, and we walk in, and we see we see Dragonfly and Steve Stallion passed out on the front row. Like, just passed this. out like this. <laughs> Bodies are hanging. I think he's got, like, one boot on. He's, he's got all these red marks all over him. The, the, the midgets are walking in. They're all, they smell like shit. And we're like, we're all come walking in all yeah, nice, nice and clean. Nice and clean. Like, he's like, what the fuck happened to you guys? 
Steve Stanley just kind of pokes up. He was like, oh, I fucking slept on the beach. <laughs> you slept <laughs> on the beach? <laughs> How you sleep on the beach for, you dope? He's like, we're supposed to go to Rip Morrison's house. And when we get there, Rip Morrison's like, you guys can't come here. He goes, I'm going to bed. I got people in it. I'm, I'm going to bed. <laughs> you got to find somewhere to go. So the midget stayed in the back of somebody's truck. <laughs> so Dragonfly and Stud decided they had to stand no choice. They slept on a beach and they got bitten up by, by, by uh, horse flies. Jesus Christ. <laughs> so they had all these red marks on them all over the place. And they couldn't use a shower in the gym yet because it was the water wasn't on right, yet. Yeah. So they all smoked horrible. Me and Anthony are sitting. That's the day we're going to work with the Eliminators. Yeah. So me and Anthony were like, I guess you guys are sitting out tonight. <laughs> but yeah, it was. It, it's it's those type of things that make you laugh. But that was like my first taste of Indian. Indian like, stuff, yeah. You know, staying in hotels and stuff like that. That was my first big taste of it. When did, uh, when did you start hearing about the places like Yankee and stuff? Again, it was just it was just the progression. Of just how word it went. Of mouth It's just somebody just... else went to another place, and I heard about it. And I'm going there. Um, the only difference is when I got to Yankee. Um, I think the allure of the PAL is what what captivated me the most. Such a great building. It's 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 the only building in New England, um, and and the place I forget the, the Littleton Hall in New Hampshire is starting to get that kind of moniker. Yeah. Steve Bradley ran there. Chaotic running there. Yeah. Um, they're starting to get that type of thing. But in but in New England. Uh, PAL was synonymous with wrestling. Still is. I, it still is. It's it funny is. because anytime you bump, like I bump into somebody or whatever, and they say, like, "Oh yeah, yeah, wrestle," and they're like, "Oh, do you, you do that down at the PAL?" And yeah. that's just what a, they think. A, of a lot of people right don't realize away. how many guys came out of there. Like you know, Scotty Tuhati came out of there. Right. Rick Fuller, just, just incredible. incredible. I mean, you know, now you got like guys like Vinnie Marsalia doing ROH and Mike you Bennett. Know, Mike Bennett. A lot of people don't realize how many guys actually moved out of you know yeah. out from that from that particular building. So the lineage there was great, but um the place caught my attention, and then the atmosphere was was great, and the guys that I was working with, and I just it it was a uh, you got to keep in mind at that time also there wasn't all the we didn't have like lights and all this other right right and shit. it's just a curtain. we had a ring and people that That's was it, it. May, we no barricade we didn't have no curtain there was no curtain oh no curtain there was no curtain <laughs> you guys seen the setup last night right yeah if you notice when you're in the the main Hall, to, not the main hall, but the the foyer. Yeah, right. Behind there, there are yeah. two doors. Yeah, two door openings. We used to actually the door closest to the locker room side. Okay. We used to actually come out of there. Yeah, we used you to know come they, out. We used to come out of the doorway and then walk through the crowd. They had the it three. set up like that um, for their fan appreciation show yeah. through those side doors. Yeah, yeah they didn't we go off the to, stage yeah, because every once in a while, what they they would set the stage up with, with chairs and everything else. Right, fill that up there but, too. Uh, so we, but most of the time we used to walk out there, and, and I was saying this earlier, guys. Is like I remember going there and um. I was gonna call. I'm like, oh, we got um, TV taping going on, and I'm just going, TV tape. What on the TV? What are we doing TV taping for? I, I was just, I was weird about it. But I'm like, whatever. I'm gonna yeah, wrestle. Like, sure. I'm gonna wrestle six times tonight. Sure, no problem. I get there. I get there. You look at like nine sheets of nine sheets of booking paper. And it was, all the way. It's like 32 matches in one night. I'm doing seven. I'm doing seven matches in three different gimmicks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it, it was that type. Of, but I didn't care. Right. I didn't care. I, I, I loved. It. I'm wrestling. I'm wrestling. I'm wrestling. I didn't make a dime doing it. I wrestled. I didn't care. I didn't care because I. I you know, I, I took my lumps, my bumps, I paid my dues that way. At the other night, it was 12, 30, 11 o'clock at night. I, yep. You know, taking the shit break, apart. Say breaking break the ring down. down. <laughs> breaking down. Let's do it again next week. You know, it's that type of thing. So when you first uh, show up to the to Yankee and you start training, like who's who's running the trainings? Uh, Joey, I'm sorry, Joey. Yeah. No, Savannah <laughs> Sousa. So Sly Sousa was running. Yep. Sly Sousa was running. Uh, and then What's that Rick class House? look like? What's that class look like? Yeah, who, who's who's training the class? Who's helping train? Uh, Brickhouse. Mostly it was, it was Brickhouse at the time. When I, when I got there, Brickhouse was up in Savannah, but it was mostly Savannah Souza. Yeah. It's Savannah Souza. Um, Steve Bradley was there, um, so he was also doing some stuff for yeah. them. Um, but it was it was a, a – have you guys ever seen uh, Brian Fury School? You guys ever go up there? Yeah, I've been up there. Uh, Brian Fury is school is run how Steve Bradley ran his school and Steve Bradley ran his school just like Spanish Sousa pretty much ran his school okay so uh, we were all kind of trained in that same type of genre where um, we'd get in there and it's like tonight we're gonna do arm drags and we'd, we'd do 600 arm drags just, and, just that, and that's all over we would do over so over in, it, yeah. it, it, until your arm drags are perfect exactly because repetitive motion Repetitive motion is what re, it's what makes you remember how to do it, how to make all your body functions work. Right. Um, I've been to classes where guys were like, they're, they're going over their stuff, and um, they're like, all right, we're going to do this, this, and this. And they go and they do and then boom, they're right to the next thing. And then I'll see like an hour later, they'll go back to what they originally did, and they still don't get it. They still right, don't get it. Yeah. I'm like, 
I, I don't understand. How can you not know how to lock up and you've been here, what, eight months? How does that work? Yeah. I don't understand that. So when we learn lockups, we learn lockup for an hour and a half, two hours. Just, That's all just we did. Just locking up. If you even thought about doing a lockup and a go behind, you were gonna do. You were gonna run. You were gonna do squats. <laughs> you were gonna do something. If all you were told to go lock up, that's all you did was lock up. And then we were doing a succession. It was lock ups, and then we do arm drags, and then we do hip tosses, then we do something else, and then we would link it all together. So after like four hours of doing the same shit, then we link it all sudden, together, and yeah. then we like. The perfect analogy was, uh, at that time for me was uh, the Karate Kid. Yeah. Wax on, wax off, paint the fence, paint the fence. He was like, yeah, I'm, I'm doing the same shit. Why am I doing this? Right. <laughs> yeah, at the end of the night, he was like, oh. This I is get, why. Yeah. Ah, okay. I get it now. I get it. And that's, that's the analogy I use for it. Nowadays, you don't see a lot of that. Brian Fury School is a lot like that, though. It's very repetitive, too, for the most part. So at that time, when you, you're training there, do they use you on their shows right away, or are they? No, I either took my time. I had to, you know, I had to. You know, do the ring stuff like that, but they already knew I wrestled some, so I, they knew that I can wrestle. So yeah, I, I, for the most part, I, on their main big shows, no, I, I kind of maybe stood out, or, or I would have to say, I'd have to say maybe eighty percent of the time I was on all the shows. Okay, there were a couple of shows that I get to, and they're like, we're not using you tonight, you know, but you know for whatever reason, and it, it, you just you just nodded your head and said, okay, yeah. you didn't cry about it, you didn't bitch about it, you just, just do what you told, and that was it. Nowadays, guys shit. bitch about it, it's like I just drove all this way, you know, I'm here, you're gonna pay me. No, fucker, you're going to get in your car and go home. That's it. That's the bottom line. Now, uh, when you first, you said you followed someone there at uh, first started training for top rope, did they ask for, like, tapes or anything like that to view, review your work at all? Or you said they were pretty much familiar with you already? Um, to be honest, I, I went through... I, you know, give me a second. Cause if I remember correctly, I think I went up there on the word of... Uh, of Anthony Rufo, which was uh, Dan Bull at the time when he went up. Um, but we had already started getting that name because we were all in that same group of people going out. I see. So they, so they were like, it, it, I was fortunate enough to go out onto the Indies with a bunch of guys that all kind of already knew each other, that all had the same work ethic, they wanted it, and promoters were seeing that all these guys are coming from this one place and they all seemed, not necessarily work at the, work the same, but they had the same work mentality that they wanted to work. So that was a big boost for us. So it was like, I was able to go to the show and, and the guys were like, oh, you work for NWA, you work with these guys, hey, well, you know, I'm able to give you a shot. And then I proved myself after that. So only, you only need that one shot. Um, and so when I got there, um, it was pretty much, they already kind of knew what I can do, but they, I think what really got them was the mask. I was Spanish. Um, and I wore the mask, and I, and I was the only one at the time doing kind of any, like, fancy Lucha Libre type stuff, like like um, special arm drags, stuff like that. Nobody else was really doing that. Um, so that was, like, my niche for it. Um, can you recall your first feud in uh, Yankee Pro Wrestling? Before we get into the feud, Mac, I want to talk about the mask thing a little bit. Because last night you came out with the mask on. I'm gonna very real quick. <laughs> it's kind of odd doing like a the podcast radio thing with two guys in masks. <laughs> oh, it's, a, it's a little strange. <laughs> you do. You guys definitely have faces for radio. Yeah, thanks, dude. <laughs> um, you you rocked uh, the mask at the PL last night during yes. your last match with with Brickhouse, and like you said, you you did the opening grappling, the wrestling, and you said it was a throwback to the old mm -hmm. your old character, which is El Diablo. El Diablo. Now, where did the name come from? Like. Where did you think of that that character come from? I, I actually I can't take credit for that. That was Tiny the Terrible came up with that one. I was uh, I had the Crypt Keeper thing and I had like a, I used to have like a cloak and whatnot. I looked like a Crypt Keeper. That's yeah. what it was. It was a Halloween costume. That's what I wore. <laughs> same like, mask. Yeah, same mask. The the mask I wore last night was version two. I actually ah, have the original mask in the closet. The update. Um, it was more of a cleaner mask, but I still have the original one. But um. Uh, he had, they actually came up because he's like yeah that Crypt Keeper name sucks but that's not gonna work yeah. he goes you're gonna do like Luke and I used to have I used to have the karate gi pants and whatnot which now everybody uses like vinyl pants and whatnot yeah, like, yeah. To, like to Jerry yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but mine worked for me so it <laughs> 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 sure didn't work for you bro nah no. <laughs> uh, I was <laughs> I was going for bastard. a Sabu slash to Jerry <laughs> but it didn't work out for Slabu, me Slabu <laughs> more <laughs> Um, we came, right. He came up. He came up with that idea, and it just it just worked. And I was like, "Well, it makes sense." I'm, you know, Spanish El Diablo Devil, skull looking mask. It just worked out. So I just kind of incorporated a lot of flames and more like that. And I used to take karate as a kid, so I just started incorporating a lot of uh, some kicks. Skills, some kicks. Exactly. Like I started doing a lot of stuff. Um, when I started doing like roundhouse kicks, nobody was doing like like um, like leg lariat type roundhouse kicks or anything like that. 
And when I started doing people were like, what the fuck? <laughs> like I was taking le- I was taking people's heads off in one night. They were like, holy shit, dude, can you do it again next weekend? It was great. Yeah, you mentioned last night that you you were really a big fan of that gimmick and oh, I love uh, that gimmick. being in the mask. Six years in that gimmick. How can you not? <laughs> that gimmick just started off as a ha ha. I mean, not a ha ha. It was just it was my life. But yeah. I never took it seriously. But at the same token, I never felt. I really never felt like I was ready to to be me. It was yeah. you know what I'm saying. It, it was weird. Um, what was weird was I was in the mask, and when I started coming out of it a little bit. I got to the point where I was doing, I was doing two shows, two matches a night on the same show as yeah. two different people, and I was developed. I developed a, a an army character, um, Willem Stryker, and I had like you know the, I had the commando paint on, yeah. and then they, they they changed it into the commando later, and uh, but I was doing that and then running upstairs and doing like the next matches that the album or vice versa, um, but nobody could pick up the difference that which was great. Two nobody different two different styles, different styles. Nobody could pick it up. Did uh, El Diablo ever do a babyface run? It was always baby face. Always, always baby face. Always, always baby really? face. Always I baby face. Be I don't care how. Man. I don't care ah. how how hard they wanted me to try to be. I, they, he would not. He was it was always a lot baby of the, face. The, the flips and, and the, the spin kicks and, and and that it falls back to Brickhouse because uh, my battles with Brickhouse as El Diablo is like probably like one of my my first real big um, feuds was with him. Um, we talked about this last night where um, he was the guy that uh, we had did this spot. Uh, where basically we had wrestled and we had a plant in the, we had a plant in the audience, which is a good friend of mine, and um, security didn't know anything about it. Police didn't know anything about it. <laughs> that might the only be people that know about it was myself, Brickhouse, you know, the the promoters. That's them. so we go out in the crowd, we're fighting, we're doing our thing. People are going nuts for it. I punch Brickhouse. Brickhouse falls and kind of hit, bumps up against my boy. Yeah. And my boy's popcorn goes flying. He's like, well, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> Cop walks over and puts his hand on his shoulder. He's like, just settle just down. Just yeah. settle down. Just <laughs> sit down. He's like, oh, we've knocked my popcorn over. He goes, don't worry about it. Just sit down. He's like, oh. So he sits down. So we go off. Go back around. Come back around to him again. And I give him a big chop. Wow. He falls back on him. And now this at this point... If anybody knows Brickhouse, Brickhouse has a tendency to over to oversell sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> he, he he does this big like oh fall back like everybody's seen it in slow motion, but it's in real time. And he falls on him, and then what happens? It, it makes him go in slow motion too. Yeah. So now you can see the popcorn falling in the air and everything else. So all of a sudden, we turn around, we get back into it. Oh, beer. Yeah, I think I seen Brickhouse fall off the balcony that same way last night. So we go out there. So now we're in the ring, and this big melee comes up. We have uh, Joey Gino's in there, Tony Maniac, the Booker's in there, trying to calm us now. We're like just trying to beat the shit out of each other. Then all of a sudden, um, there's like more people. Like Tex McCoy gets in the ring, and all of a sudden, my Good partner, and my my buddy, gets jumps in the ring. Yeah. Security has no idea that he's part of the show. So they like straight up like s- tackle him and spear him in the corner. <laughs> and my buddy's like punching the dude in the face. He's like, let me go, let me go. He's like, no, no, you gotta get the fuck out of there. They're trying to get him out of the ring. And now the cops are getting involved. Now the legit <laughs> police department is getting involved. They think the Spanish is crazy. We're like, he's trying to get him off. You can see him on like, throwing guys back and forth. <laughs> so he's like trying to flip out on one night. And people are like on their feet. It's just, it's just crazy. It's they don't know what. Imagine. They, they, yeah. they, 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 exactly. There's like people that normally wouldn't be in the ring at that. You know, I think that there was like a twelve-year-old kid in the ring at some point. You know, they used to sweep the ring. It was just like craziness. Like, he, like I'm telling you, he must have been in the corner trying to sweep something. His name was Chris Pyro. Ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. You know, it was just it was crazy. And then um, I end up. You going to the bathroom? Oh, yeah. He's got a weak, yeah. weak bladder. That one. Ba- <laughs> bathrooms to the left. Lights on, straight through. In the yeah, Rick, just show him. Just masked guys wandering through your house. That's that's a normal around here, apparently, because nobody's batting an you eye. Masked guys were. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I was gonna take that a little too far, you know. But it was um, it was weird because uh, what made that whole thing crazy was that was the first time that I had ever like hurt somebody to the point where I was scared. Right. And I was brick house. I threw a wild chair. Some there was a chair ended up getting in the ring, and I kind of just threw. I kind of just did this mighty leap. Just hucked o- it over, but I kind of just. Threw him and I kind of hit him with it, and it kind of caught him on the top of the head and split him open instant. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> and he was like off to the hospital. Also, I think he got like seven staples. Just he had staples his head up. Yeah, and I remember being upstairs afterwards, like crying, like, like hysterically. He's just, just like, out, I was you, like, oh yeah. my god, I just hurt this guy. I just, I, I think I just killed this guy. Oh my god, oh my god. 
And uh, like like 45 minutes later, he comes walking in the door. He's like, all right, listen, I got a promo I got to do. I'm like, what do you mean? And ladies and gentlemen, that's Rick House open. <laughs> So I'm like, punch me in the face. I deserve it. Punch me in the face. Like, what are you talking about? We go out there wrestle all the time. We know what the risks are. Hey, it is, it's what it is. You wasn't intentionally trying to break me over, was you? No. <laughs> I'm like in tears over here. And that, that seems to be the, the uh, Brickhouse Baker kind of way, man. He's he's always been that guy. Let things like that slide. And yeah, Brickhouse. See, the thing with Brickhouse, Brickhouse knows when. It, it, in this business, you have to know when it's a work and when's a shoot. Right. Um, and a lot of guys don't know when it's a shoot and when it's a work. Um, Brickhouse is really good to knowing the difference. And Brickhouse yeah. is one guy that you didn't want to uh, get on his bad side because he'll. Uh, He'll pop you one. Oh no, yeah, no yeah. questions asked. He had no problem. He had no problem trying to stretch somebody else to prove a point. And I mean, I, I don't know what it was like back then, but now, like, I, I, we've gotten to know Brickhouse a little better over the last, like, like you said, Brickhouse has had a hand pretty much in everyone in New England training. He had both of us, obviously, mm-hmm. uh, when we first started and all that. It, you know, you, you know him from training, and you know you get along or whatever. But from the last few years, from doing shows with him and. And hanging out more, uh, Brickhouse, great guy. I don't really know too many people on his bad side these days. But back then, a little different, or no? I mean, same kind of deal. Yeah, it was pretty much the same. But again, he was still he was still in the learning process and whatnot. Right, so yeah. he was always still training, still learning. Um, my first meeting of Brickhouse, I, I kind of I, I didn't like him at first. Yeah, because <laughs> he had that that. The Brickhouse with hair was yeah he had was, the, the, more the, hair. was it the hair yeah, yeah more hair. Hair. but he had I don't know he had um. Uh, he had that redneck thing to him. It was just yeah. weird. It was just, I know it was weird for me. But uh, it wasn't like it, it rubbed off the wrong way. Yeah. It was just like, yeah, he kind of looked like it's a like, prick. Who is this guy? Yeah. He, but then once once you get the norm, it's like they, it, that faded away yeah, quick. Yeah, you realize that. And, 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 and it, was like, it was literally like, I looked at him for like a second and we talked for a second. I'm like, man, this redneck is so rude. And like maybe like 20 minutes later, I'm like, dude, this guy's <laughs> This guy's great. hilarious. This is the fucking best. You know, and it was, that, it was that one of those type of things. But, to to know Brickhouse to love that kid, that that dude would do anything. Oh yeah. oh yeah, he didn't care what was going on in the match, and and last night was testament to that. Like we didn't have to talk or anything, just throwing KV out the window. We didn't have to talk about anything. It's been thrown out the window. Many times. <laughs> it's okay, dude. You know, we didn't have to talk about anything. We 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 just like this is the finish. This is what we're doing. And okay, that no, was we'll, it. We'll yeah, see was each other later. in the locker room, I seen you guys maybe talk to each other like three yeah. times. You know what I mean? And we had things two we might want to do. You, you guys were just like. Yeah, it's just it's gonna be crazy. <laughs> you I, think, walk I, think, away. I think out of the six times we talked, three times we were taking shots. Yeah, just making fun. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that was pretty much it. Mood breakers. Oh man. So you guys you're feuding with Brickhouse at Yankee. Mm. What's what's Yankee drawing at this time? Because I know you were saying a lot of the problem That's I see wrestling then and wrestling now are entirely different. Back then Joe and Yankee used to draw very well because it, it Fall River's a wrestling town. Always has so been. I mean, when you had guys, we had guys like Kahuna, Tex McCoy. We had guys like uh, uh, Flash. Flash Yo, was I remember Harvard. Flash. Flash <laughs> was our thing. thing. Yep. <laughs> Flash was our thing. Real quick, funny story about Flash. Flash did a show for Yankee at a at a fair. They used to do a lot of fair shows in the summer. Yep. And um, he's at the show, and uh, this he's a baby face, mind you. It looks just like Sting, a little heavier, but it looks less like Sting. Old thing, not that. I, I had a flash hand, uh, foam hand. Did you? Yeah. So <laughs> sorry. Um, <laughs> so he's at this show, and um, big baby face. I think he's. I, I think he's working tax. I forget who he's working, but he's big baby face. And some kid in the crowd hucks a hot dog at him, <laughs> hits him square between the face, bow, like a porn star, bow, yeah, right just, in the face. Just... And he proceeds to get down. And cuts calling the cops because I want that fucking kid arrested. He's swearing <laughs> at this fucking. I want that fucking kid arrested for assault. And we're like, what are you doing? Assault with a hot You're dog. You're stupid. Bro. What are you doing? <laughs> Shut up and get and lose already, you retard. <laughs> oh, I do. And I think right after that, like like a month later, he quit. Yeah, so he's <laughs> he just, all done. He just disintegrated. He did. I was just, he just disappeared. He just, <laughs> he just left. You know, but we had a lot of we had a lot of good time. we had um. So th- those PAL shows packed. For the most, I would have to say 80% of the time, well, I was there, I wrestled there for f- f- almost four years straight, and then I don't know, for like another year or two, but uh, yeah. in times where I was there that I can remember, I don't remember any bad, bad houses. I think maybe there was one or two shows where maybe they, you know, they shouldn't have run the show, so right, you're right. always going to get those those nights or something happens, but for the most part, there was usually, at that time, they were packing two and change 
on a, on a regular, on a, just, just a regular, on a regular let's just run a show tonight type of thing. Yeah. You know, he was packing. When he used to run in uh, New Bedford, it was the same thing. He used to pack that joint. You know, I don't know how he did it, but he, but did. he did. And this it. was yeah. no name. This was always, it was always with no names. It was, we were the only names. It was, and, and again, it falls back to what I was saying, how a story was written. Right, and, and how it, they were. And it was just the way the, the show went on. It's like, you know, the guy's giving you, the book tells you you need, you got 10, 15 minutes and whatnot, and then you go out there and you realize the, the match before you was this fucking hot, and the match next to you is supposed to be like their key, you know. Yeah, the big the, match the, the of the big night. big match of the night or, or pre-big match. Yeah. Well, then you're going to want to say, you know what, fine, they got me, give me 10, 15, I'm going to go maybe eight. And bring them down just a little yeah, bit, and let the them really down. bring yeah. them up and whatnot. Nowadays, you don't see that. You don't see that. If they, if they, if you're told you got 15 minutes, I'm telling you, you go 25. that guy's gonna go 15 <laughs> to 20. And I'm guilty of it. it it's happened. Right, I've, I've right. had it happen. I've had it happen on certain shows. Not necessarily because I'm trying to get myself over. It's just it's, you know, it's just the things way go things go a little longer sometimes than you but expect. If you look at how, but you can see what guys and what sh- what matches that actually happens with. But the flow of the show changes entirely. It just changes entirely. Well, I thought last night was really cool. Was in the uh, the locker room. I was talking to Brickhouse, and he had just like popped up upstairs. And it, the show was supposed to start at seven thirty, but it was seven thirty, and people were still coming uh-huh. in. The li- Do you know the line went down the street around the block? I believe it around the block. By the time the show started, and I just want to say again: the last time they had something like that with non stars on the show was oh wait, oh six Bob Wire match with who? Me and Brickhouse Bear. <laughs> But Brickhouse looked at me and he was like, you know, I just got the numbers upstairs. We're over 300 already. Yep. He's like, and that's no no names on the show. He's like, like it used to be. Like mm-hmm. it should be. That's like, how it is. He was so proud and, and it was so cool to see. Like, I don't know, that place sold out again for you guys. It was, I, it was I had, awesome. I, I took the book at Yankee for, um, I think maybe about a year at one point. I forget what year it was, but it took about a year. It was probably like maybe 98 maybe. And um, a year, six months to a year maybe. And all those, not not to say that it was because of me, but all those shows were almost sellouts almost every single time. And um, it was weird because at that time I had I had I had the belt I had the, the interstate belt at that time when they gave me the book. They said, "Why don't you take the book and start, yeah. you start booking matches and whatnot?" And I was like, "Well, I need to get if if that's the case, I need to get rid of my I gotta get out of the belt." Yeah. Because I didn't I didn't want to be that guy that was like, "Oh, booking and putting yourself yeah. over." And and it, it, it unfortunately still kind of translated that because I still had the belt and booking. But it led to a night when the, they first had their own. Um, I came up with ideas like, why don't we do cage? We'll do a cage match. We'll make the whole night a cage match. So, Every night was a cage match. So the old Yankee shows that did like tonight's the cage night. Yeah, that was your that, idea. That very first time, that was that was the reason that I set up with them to do. It was that one shot deal with all cages and whatnot. Now I was a fan then. Yeah. Uh, like sitting on the crowd paying for shows. I always thought it was like, well, I just don't think they want to take the cage down. And that's well, that was the initial idea. <laughs> yeah, okay. That was the idea. We were just like, we'll put it up once and then that screw the it. Idea. We'll take it down at the end of the show. No, that was the idea. Later, guys. Bye, Raina. My kids are leaving the house, so. <laughs> so you were saying you, you took the book for a while. Um, they um, You're in charge of booking your own matches as well. As I, the booker, I, I booked my matches with Tony Mania. I booked the show. I would book the whole show, yeah. talent, everything else, along with my own matches, whatnot. But it, with me, I, I made sure that I ran the ideas I had for my own personal match with somebody else. I see. So that this way, um, Joe Schmovene is like, oh well, okay, Jose Perez put himself over. Yeah, tonight. yeah. And that was never the case. I always made sure I went over with somebody else when it came to my stuff, so it made sense. If it made sense for me to have, to, you know, not to go over. Then, then I didn't go over. If it made sense for the story, for me to go over, then it made sense. Which is but to- everybody else, I was a very, I'm a, I'm a very, um, I use Paul Heyman because I like the way Paul Heyman books the shows. Yeah. Um, I, I'm the type, I, I like to book a show where I say, listen, yeah, you're going to, well, kind of like a story, but I'm very articulate about what I want. Like, I I, I want to know, I, I'm, you, you guys are going to work against each other. Uh, this, I'm telling you, this is how you're starting and this is how you're finishing. And I'm going to let you go. Now, if I know you've had clout and you've been around, you can do your thing, right, right. I'm going to let you have your time. But I'm going to come back again. I'm going to ask you again. I'm like, all right, this is, the type of, this is the type of beginning I want and this is the type of end yeah. I want. You got 10 minutes, but I, you, you probably, I might want you to just go by like six. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Little, little you, you don't, you don't have that now. Yeah. Promote them like you guys are working. Have fun. You can't have that yeah. now because that's when stupidity happens. That's when you have a show with 600 roll-ups, 300 DDTs, you know, and so on and so yeah. on. You can't have that. And that's how that's how I book show. So when you when you ever look at the matches, none of the matches ever look the same. Yeah, they were never they were never the same finishes. If you if you, 
if you had a, a DDT as your finish, nobody used the DDT, DDT. Right, yeah. You know, Rick Fuller was a chop. Nobody, nobody used the chop. Yeah. <laughs> if somebody even threw a chop on the show, they would not work the next show. Yeah. That's how it was. It was that type of respect that is lost now, and that's the other thing that bothers me. It, it's real quick on Chainsaw. Somebody hit me up today um, and asked me, and it says, listen, I'm uh, I'm." Redebuting myself, I got a gimmick. I want to use my, I want to use the, the towel. It fits the idea I have. I want to use the towel on my head. Okay. Is it okay? And I'm like, why are you asking me? He's like, and then it clicked because I use the towel. Did you do the, yeah, yeah. You do and the I'm deal. like, he's like, out of respect, because he trained with me. Yeah. I don't want to say his name because I want to, yeah, I don't want to divulge his gimmick right now. Um, but you did it for a long time in the area. People know that you did. I didn't want, I want to make sure you're aware of that. Yeah. That, that part of respect is lost nowadays. That part of respect was lost. And I was like, by all means, do that, dude. I stole that from Taz. So by all means, <laughs> just do that. <laughs> I thought that was like, wow, that's pretty cool. I used to have to shred it up to all the whole nine yards. And I, that was the only one in the area doing it. Right. Somebody else, some kid had it at some show one day. And um, he st- he wanted to go out with it before my match. Yeah. And, and just before just I walked like, no, out, dude. the promoter was like, what are you doing? He goes, oh, I'm going for my match. He goes, you're not going that, out with that fucking towel. That's a no-go. I'm going out with that towel. And he pulled the towel off his head. Now, earlier you were, you were talking about the whole finishes and – how you guys would go everybody on the show you go over so you wouldn't see any repeated finishes or whatever and that you don't see it much anymore and I gotta we have our, our issues right now with, with uh, SPW and, and, and Showcase Pro Wrestling Blackheart mm-hmm. um, but when he brought Maldoon Sasha Maldoon in to stop booking and doing all that that was a big thing that Maldoon uh, had a, that's a good big, a big I'm glad hand to hear that. in and that Maldoon would go around and talk to everybody like what's your finish gonna be you know, and he would find out, and like, all right, here's what were you gonna do, and if, if there were things exactly, that were doubles, Maldon would be like, all right, if, well, if, they're doing the the leg submission exactly. thing. Like, you shouldn't do a figure yeah, four for a finish a or whatever. Yeah. No, that's and that's and that's what's lost. That's what Maldon. That's that's my time frame with yeah. Maldon. That's how, that's how we were doing with Savannah Souza, and them, that's how I was taught. You have to have a flow to show, and you yeah. can't. That's why fans get up. And leave. Why am I gonna sit there and pay money to see the? Five Three matches yeah. <laughs> and, and see all the same fucking finish. The other thing that kills me is like, you have two guys that are wrestling, but you don't know who to put over. So we're going to do a count out. We're going to do DQ. Yeah. But the match before that is a storyline that you've already developed, and that has to end in a roll up, you know, something stupid. Right. Yeah. You can't have no clean Who finish. cares if that guy's going to go over or not? Who cares? Right. It doesn't make a difference. The shit's a fucking work. <laughs> the shit's a work. Somebody say, hey, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll put them over. Or, right, you, you or, feel or, like that. There's not enough just, people stepping up to say it. Exactly. Just, you know, everybody's like, oh, I got to win. You know, your pay ain't changing. Yeah. Your pay is the same shit when you walk in the fucking building, whether you won or lost. Right. It doesn't make a difference. The title don't make a difference. Just, there's, like, no, there's no uh, winner's purse. Yeah, in, in it's, just, it's like your fucking kid. I got a text message again. People... Blowing your, well, dude, you, I'm sure your Facebook's, uh, Facebook's been blowing up the last couple of days, you and Brickhouse. Been getting yeah, wild. Fucking, you know, it's in, and that's the thing. There is it, but I'm glad the Muldoon's doing it because when you get to a show, you should be told, yeah, bit new beer. Um, you get to a show, you should be told, this is what I want you to do. This one, you know, and again, if you if you had a little time with it and whatnot, but right, yeah, you, give you a little more freedom, a little or... more freedom and shit. But um, but you as a wrestler, at the same token, should be like, okay. Um, I know that my finish is uh, fill in the, the blank, yeah, yeah the whatever the rock deal. bottom. That's right, what I mean, yeah. right? I'm gonna, you know, rock bottom, you know, uh, pig blanket or whatever. You know, and you need to go now as you as that doing that, and you know your first, second, first half of the show that gives me. You as a wrestler should go up to the other guys and say, "What are you finishing? What are, What are you doing in your match? You know, the guys that are following you. What are you doing?" So that you don't look like a complete asshole to them. Right. Because you're doing the same shit. Or if you're after them, hey, how are you finishing your match? And if they tell you, well, I'm using a DDT, I'm like, well, DDT is kind of like my finish. Like, I do this. Yeah, yeah. You know, out of respect, you they probably, shouldn't yeah, do right, it. Right. But of course, they're not going to do it because they're not, they're not fucking taught to do that now. That's what fucking hurts me. They're just like, well, well you know, I'm going to yeah, do a DDT. Well, okay, we'll just well, yeah. fucking do it. We'll give a fuck. Fine. It's For some reason, DDT. his DDT can't, yeah. you know, your DDT. I've seen, seen a show with Jake the Snake Roberts on it. Jake the Snake Roberts. Yeah. As the main. Yeah. <laughs> How many DDTs do you think you saw that night? Four. Yeah. R- Five really that DDTs. Man. Jesus, man. Five fucking DDTs that they all got up from. Jake Ooh. Roberts flipped the Oh, I would imagine, out. man. He didn't know about like He didn't flip on until he heard about the one that was like two matches before his. 
And he was just like, come and on. And then he found out about the other one. He wigged the butt. I thought he was going to kill him. I, thought he was gonna <laughs> fuck him. I really thought he was going to cut somebody. But it, but it's the truth. I mean, why, why as a paying customer do I want to go in and see A, B, C, D wrestler do the same exact finish, the same exact move? I don't want to see that. Right. I, shock me. Enter, it's entertain me. You want to entertain me. Give me, me. something different. And, and again, that's like I said, it falls back to the promoters. The promoters need, yeah. to, the, the promoters need to reel those guys back in and say, because ultimately, it's all fun, but it's still cause it's still a job per se. If, right. Anytime you're getting money for a service, it's a job. So unless you're the one calling the shots, you do what you're told. Yeah. Or you don't get paid and you go to fuck home. Yeah. Flat out. That's the bottom line. So when you get there, ask, what do you need me to do? How should I do this? Any particular you want me to do? What in particular you don't want me to do? Right. What do you want me to stay away from? Exactly. You need to ask those questions because if not, you have robotic. How many times do you see roll ups one after the other? You know, schoolboys one after the other. You know, a match that opens three got three matches in a row. They do an international spot. Same, same thing. Same tackle, drop same, down. <laughs> same tackle, drop down, hip toss, arm drag, body slam, over the top. Three matches back to back. And as a fan, you're and sitting there And they're all going baby like, faces doing it. <laughs> you're sitting there going like, why, why doesn't that guy duck? Well, these, <laughs> these guys all change fucking clothes because it's all the same shit. Just it's, same moves, different stupid. guy. It is it, really. And that the the art form of wrestling from the booking standpoint is gone. Yeah. Anybody anybody can rent a ring or buy a ring and say, I'm a promoter. Yeah. No, you're not. You're a fucking guy with a couple of dollars and can buy a ring. Money mark. You ain't shit. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> So you're the TRP Interstate Champion. Yep. And you, are you still El Diablo? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's tough, right? Yeah. I, to, I told you. I told you. It's I was a terrible memory. It's okay, dude. <laughs> I don't think I was at that time. I think I was already out of it. Because uh, Brickhouse, again, back to Brickhouse. Brickhouse was the one that got me out of the ladder match. No, I was going to say, was, now, how, did, how did the El Diablo disappear? And it, he, we, had a, we had a match in uh, oh, oh, no, 96, 98, 98. Where um, we did a lot of match and he won and the loser would be the guy to. Uh, so either you got the belt or yeah, you, exactly. You and I had to lose, I lost the mask and whatnot. See, and it, I took off the mask. And at the time, I was doing another character called Charlie Bruin. Yep. Um, which I ended up removing and and I just wrestled prior to the match. So people were like, oh my god, and people were like just ecstatic. It's him. I was like, holy shit. Um, uh, little known fact though that the Jose Perez thing, the Perez thing isn't my real last name. It's right. actually my mother's maiden name. Um, Jose is my real name, but the Perez is my mother's maiden name. But the whole Jose transformation, because when I got out of the mask, I started doing Charlie Bruin more. Yeah. And then I got out of, you know, now I obviously doing Charlie Bruin, I got out of doing Commando. Yeah. Because it just didn't make sense. So Commando nobody's just gonna, disappeared. Nobody's, yeah. nobody's, nobody's going to buy that I'm doing two gimmicks without a mask. Um, I can't believe the market. That's, that's that guy with the face paint. <laughs> um, and I did it more of like an edgier type yeah. of Charlie Brown. But the change over to Jose Perez happened uh, while I was working for uh, Tony Rumble. Okay. Um, Tony Love, Tony, that's where Rich Paladino comes into play. Rich Paladino actually was the guy that brought me into to, into Tony. Now, is that why um, Rich did the ring announcer for you guys last yeah, night? Yeah, Rich, Rich has been a longtime friend of mine, and um, he's ref, he's, re, he's uh, ring announced all over the East Coast, all over the place. Yeah, he's a great dude. Not, you know, ECW and everything else. And um, it felt nothing against Sean O. Sean O's a great guy and whatnot, but um, it, it for this, I needed him. He had told me he was going to come down anyway, check it out. Yeah. He had hit me up. He's like, hey, do you mind? And I'm like, I'll make the call and find out. And then I talked to Sean that night. And I'm like, listen, it's nothing against you. No disrespect. He goes, no, no, no. I, have no, I completely understand. No problem. So that's how it worked. But um, Tony Rumble was the uh, the guy. When I came in, after I left uh, Tony Rumble with El Diablo, I came in with the Charlie Bruin gimmick. I remember going in. And it was Charlie. It was uh, Tony Rumble and um, Scott Dickinson, the referee. Okay, yep. And Scott was the booker at the time. And I come walking in, and he's like, oh, wait, wait, we're going to do that. Right. What's the name? He goes, Charlie Brown. He's like, man, I don't like it. <laughs> no. Nope. I'm like, um, now nah, I'm in my, and I'm, when I'm telling you Charlie Brown, it's, it's Charlie Brown. It's, it's like, I couldn't use Charlie Brown. I'm in, like, Charlie Brown looking right, shit. Right, right, yeah, yeah. Edge, tape fist and everything else, and I got the Bruins hat on. Him. And he's like, yeah, no. And then <laughs> he comes walking, what you, uh, Tony Rumble comes walking over, and he tells me, he's like, hey, we're going to use him tonight, but we're going to use him as Charlie Brown. He's like, no, we're not. No, no, no. You're, uh, you're, uh, you're a Paco Perez. I'm like, what? I'm like, no, no, you're, you're, you're a Pe- Pedro. He can't. He called me like Pedro or something or other. And I'm like, 
oh, okay. So, well, whatever you say, dude. Okay. So I went out there and I was entirely not who I was supposed to be. Right. <laughs> and that was like my mentality. Like, well, I got to get out of this gimmick. And that's when the slow transformation into Jose from, Perez from, yeah, started to Jose. changing over. And I started getting more. And that's when I started debuting the Rough Riders anthem. Yeah. And I got a little more street, a little more. Uh, a little more gangster. A little more hood and gangster, yeah. shall we say. So you're, you're, you're booking. Uh, Yankee at the time, yeah. right? Was it already split to South Coast or no? I actually, I was actually already gone. I never actually. Oh, you, South so Coast. it was already. Sp- yeah, I was even no South Coast. I was already gone by that time. By the time South Coast came to play and Steve was involved, I was already gone. So what was what was the the reasoning behind you leaving uh, Yankee? Uh, it was more it was more differences of issues because um, I, I care too much. Yeah, I'll be the first one to admit it all the time. I'm a hard ass. I, I could be a dick. Yeah, <laughs> I, I could be, and, and I'm talking like a Ron Jeremy. Like, yeah, I could be a dick. Um, a and solid, not, yeah, like inch a, dick. It, it's, it's solid, like legit, like like petrified wood. It, it was just, um, I, I had the book, and um, Savannah Souza had uh, had worked with us at the NEWA. Yep, and um, him and Steve Bradley was there. Um, and Steve was his boy. And this is a story that I'm He's a get mofo. This is a story I shouldn't really get into, but I'm going to get into it. He, um... Yes. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, Savannah Snooza kind of was doing things and, and saying a lot of things about Yankee, and I was still part of Yankee, and I was still... And I had just gotten back to NWA. And he was just like, you know, fuck Joe Eugenio and all this other crazy shit. And and I was doing the book up there. Yeah, because they and, had a and, falling out. Yeah, they had a huge falling yeah. out. And then, like, one day, like, he shows up at the show. And then the next day, he shows up at the booking meeting. And, you know, they're talking about, well, we're going we're gonna to bring, you know, Eugenio. We're going to bring uh, Savannah Souza back, you know, as a kind of advisor. And I flipped the fuck out. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, are you fucking kidding me? I said, that dude was fucking just talking all kind of shit about yeah, you. Yeah, just like, a couple of days how ago. How do you sit there and let somebody talk shit about you? And then like, hey, come on in. Let's have pasta. And you can't <laughs> do that. And then um, Steve Bradley was his boy one night. And, um, do you guys know about the history of me and Steve Bradley? Um, not you entirely. Hear about it? I- I've heard some some things, all yes. Right. I'm not. It's not a. Pro, it's not one of my, my proud. One of my proud moments. Steve Bradley, um, pre WWE pickup. Yeah. yeah. Um, was he, he was always a great talent. Never take his talent away from. Um, he he had kind of a big head prior to going there because he knew he was kind of going there. Yeah, he had the idea that he was. Yeah, we had a, a show. I never had a problem with him up until this one particular show at the PAL where it was uh, myself, him, him versus myself. For the title, and at that time, uh, Don Vega just debuted up there, and we're doing a gimmick okay, yeah. where they had like them banditos, and they were trying to recruit me. We had this little storyline going, so it was supposed to be me and Steve Bradley. Um, I was going over via like a DQ type of situation because at that time I had the title. Um, I wasn't booking at, I, at that point. I wasn't booking anymore, but I had the title. They were supposed to do some kind of thing, and um, they were gonna like pop Steve or whatever the case may be, and I was gonna do save blah. blah. Yep. Um, Steve didn't want to hear it. So he's like, yeah, we're not fucking doing that. And now he's being told by the booker, this is what we're doing. He's like, oh, yeah, oh okay, we'll do it. So we go out, we do the match. The match is completely kiboshed. He changed everything we was going to do. And then the spot happens where all these guys are supposed to come out and do the shtick and whatnot. So then um, I take my bump. I potter out. I leave like I'm supposed to. All of a sudden, uh, uh, he's out there with Don Vega. I'm out by the ring. Don Vega comes over. He takes, takes a chair and hits Don Vega in the spine. Ugh. With the edge, not the flat of the chair, with the so physical like jab. edge of the chair to the lower spine. I never heard a person yell so hard in my life. Well, I had seen this, and I ran out, and grabbed the chair, and I hit him with it. And he no sold it, and he ripped the chair out of my hand and cracked me in the skull with it, split me open, uh. split me open, and uh, for shits and giggles. But yeah, oh yeah. Wow, I'm looking at it right <laughs> now. <laughs> split me wide open. That was my first big adventure of like, holy shit, what the hell just happened to me? And uh, I remember going in the back, and I just started. Bleed and I'm like, like what that's the fuck? not what was supposed to go down at so all. So he's up there celebrating the whole nine yards. You know, he's the big hero. He comes walking back, and I'm on the stairs. At this point, Joe Eugenio knows I'm flipping the fuck out. Yeah, he's trying to push me out the door, and he's like, he's like, Jose, you gotta calm down. He goes, calm down. I'm like, fuck that. I'm fucking him up. <laughs> so here comes, here comes uh, uh, Steve, and he's like, well, what the fuck was that all about? I'm like, what the fuck? Fuck you. And I, yeah. I just decked him and busted his lip wide open. And like two weeks later, he gets picked up or something like that. Yeah. He got, you know, he got picked up. So that was like my last thing. And I remember seeing him at the next PAL just before he was going to WWE. And I was walking on, just having to go in and say hi. Because I, I was, I was uh, removed from the next show. 
because, oh, of, education. because of that incident. Oh, at that time, I was I was running also a primal conflict. So they were trying to say that, oh, well, it's because you have such an ego with primal conflict now that I'm like, it had nothing to do with that at all. Yeah. At all. I was like, he was just being a dick. And so yeah. you drilled him. So yeah. I just drilled him. I called him out on it. I drilled him. And what did he do? He put his towel on his head, picked it back, didn't change it, went home. That's what he did. Next month I came over, I come walking down the stairs, he just happened to have his back turned to me as I'm coming down the stairs, turns around, he sees me with this big blank look in his eye like I'm going to hit him again. I'm, yeah, just... I put my hand out to him, I said, congratulations, I heard about your thing. I said, good luck. Yeah. And I kept on walking. So last time I talked to him, up until years later when he started, he'd already started uh, uh, WFA. Yeah. And um, he was doing ring rentals and cage <clears throat> stuff for NECW, and we bumped into each other at front in, in Framingham. And I was like, hey, how you doing, Steve? You know, how you been? And I said, I'm not sure if you remember me. I'm such and such. You, uh, and I said, uh, and he goes, uh, I said, if you don't remember me, I said, uh, we had an altercation. Yeah, I punched him in the face once. Oh, <laughs> shit. I said, listen, I just want to apologize. Yeah. yeah. It's, been, it's been this long. You know, it's just it's something that I want to get past. You know, just because I just, we never really got past it. Right. Because I remember seeing him backstage at, at a WWE event one time. And um, he kind of just gave me that look like, oh, fuck. And he kept walking. And uh, you made me peace, and then shortly after that, we passed. Yeah. So, but I, I had the, at least had the pleasure of knowing that. And he's like, "Listen," and at that night, that conversation, we talked. We had a good maybe fifteen twenty minute conversation, and he was like, "Listen," he goes, "That was the shit." He goes, "That was the stuff that happened in the past." Yeah. He goes, "I was a dick," and he had, he he admitted that to me. He goes, "Yeah." He goes, I, I was a dick. I, I just I, I kind of had a big head, and I knew I shouldn't have, but um, I had a lot of people feed me a lot of stuff. Right. And I said, understandably. And um, he goes, but he goes, I've heard about you. I heard of, you know, what you can do. So I'd love to have you come up to the BFA. And I'll have that idea. So that was like that, that urban type thing. They right, went on yeah. for a while and it kind of got swept underneath, underneath yeah. and got w- worked away. So I want to go back to the, the whole primal conflict thing. How did, uh, how did you running, how did you start booking primal conflict? Yeah, how did you Primal get conflict was an, interesting, uh, was an interesting beast in its own right. Primal Conflict was a product of Studley Steve Stallion, and nobody would expect that me and Studley Steve Stallion to be in bed together. Right. Um, Steve was running it out of Johnston at a play, a little place, and he he had this idea. It was like the ECW feel and whatnot right. because nobody in New England was doing it. Everybody, everybody in New England was like, we could do a little kind of old school hardcore so They were stuff. taunting a little yeah, bit of hardcore. Nobody, nobody wanted to like do it because, oh, we're in high school. They're going to have that. We, and nobody had like an educated People building. hitting them with like rubber trash yeah. barrels. Yeah, and yeah nobody had like, like an that. educated building they can actually do. So nobody yeah, really yeah. did it. Where Steve decided, you know what? Screw this. I'm going to do it. And he had an inside to a bar, a little club in Johnston, hole in the wall place. Yeah. That uh, we can run out of. So we did this. He was running... 15, 20, maybe 30 people. Yeah. You know, bringing on like King Kong Bundy and just doing outrageous gimmicks. We had this little chubby kid called him King Kong Crummy. Yeah. You know, just stupid little shit like that. And then we would book Wonderland Dog Track. Yep. And we, then we started bringing in like the Eliminators and stuff like that. And I'm sorry, not the Eliminators, like the Pit Bulls and shit. Okay. Um, but it just wasn't, something just wasn't clicking right. It just wasn't something that was wrong. And he, uh, I started making suggestions and that was around September of, uh, 99 maybe Okay In that general area And um, I said well, Why don't we try to do this This and this And again I had the fundamental Of what I was taught From booking with Joe And Eugenio In, in uh, Savannah And how I was taught that way well, Let's just try something different I took the book over in October um, We did a few things uh, Brought in New Jack in December Out of the clear blue No advertisement No nothing I, yep. I ran a deal with him Because um, at that point um, I uh, there's another different story. I met New Jack through the uh, mass transit incident. That's what I met. Okay, Jack. and that's how I got the end with the ECW guys. Now, so were you do, were you on the show or were you just up there at the mass transit deal or? Uh, no, actually, I testified at the trial. Oh, I didn't see. I didn't know that. Oh yeah, I'll tell you about that. That's another story. I'll tell you about that. Um, I ended up bringing New Jack in. We did it on the cup, you know, just real quiet. Yeah, we brought him in. People were like, "What the fuck?" We did the shtick. Um, at the time, we had two knuckleheads, uh, Jamie Payne and Nemesis. Okay. They were like New England's Cactus Jack and Kane. Did Nemesis paint his face? Uh, no. Okay, I'm sorry. No, I'm Nemesis gonna... was just a big, he was like 6'4", just a big dude. Just, okay. <laughs> and it came to me, and they were like, they were Gino Martino's guys. Okay. Nobody would book them because they were just outrageous. They didn't. All they wanted to do was hardcore. Just and crazy nobody, shit. And nobody yeah. would do it. Nobody would allow them to do it. And I'm like, um, we'll do it. Yeah, just come um, on down, We can't fellas. pay him much, but we'll do it. He's like, oh, no, I don't, we don't care. We just want to do this and da, da, da. We're like... Um. Okay. Well, he goes. We got this idea. We're gonna do the best out of seven, and I'm like, best out of seven. What? 
we're gonna do best out of seven hardcore match, you know, blah blah blah. And I'm like, you guys lost your fucking mind. Yeah. I'm like, um, I'm not booking you for seven matches to try to kill yourself. They can't find, you guys are nuts. Mm-hmm. I said, how about we do best, you know, maybe three out of five, you know, something like that. Yeah. We do like a three out of five or some shit, you know, or, or two out of three. <laughs> He'll go, right, right, right. So the first night they did, they went out there and they did all kind of crazy shit, fire and everything else. I'm like, what the fuck are you going to do now? Yeah. You know, after that. But we brought them in and, and we built them on that. So we had, we brought a new Jack and then we came to January. We had new Jack, uh, Sandman for the next one. We were supposed to bring in Abdullah the Butcher for the next one. And um, Abdullah the Butcher was another prick in this business can be. He's like, oh, we got that. I want to, we got them all booked. We're all getting ready to be paid and everything else. He's like, oh, I don't. Then he calls me up like a week before the show. He's like, I need to fly first class. I'm like, right. <laughs> I think you're ass. So my response to him was like, well, I think your ass is staying home. Right. So I ain't paying your ass to fly first class. If you can't fit in a regular seat, your ass ain't coming. Because why? Because I knew I was never going to see him again. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I can say whatever I want. So <laughs> that's how that went. So we end up booking, like last minute, we end up booking like Sandman or some shit. Yeah. Instead Which of- leads me to a different story. <laughs> Sandman. You guys ever meet Sandman? Uh, one time. I'll make this quick. Sandman was at a show. I was at a show in a... In, uh, you guys know Bert Santana? El Mascarado? Oh, yeah. I'd, okay. I'd, yeah. So we had a show. I get a phone call. We got Sammy coming in. I'm on a show on the 19th. Our show's the 20th. Yeah. I get a phone. It's always my, birth, my wife's birthday weekend. So I get a phone call from, from Sandman. He's in Philadelphia getting ready to get on a plane. He's like, listen, you motherfucker. He goes, nobody, my airplane ticket isn't here. I don't know what the fuck is going on. I'm like, oh, my God. What the fuck is happening? There? He's like, I'm buying a ticket, and I bet I have my fucking money when I get there. I'm like, what the? And now at this point, I can't get in touch with Steve Stalin. I can't get in touch with nobody. He's flying into the airport. And I had to go pick him up. So I told him, I told him, I said, I gotta leave. I gotta do my magic. I gotta leave. I fly to the airport. Here comes Sam. Man. I don't know how they let a, a, a grown ass man walk on a plane with a candle stick on a carry on. I don't know how that worked. But again, this <laughs> on is the carry on. This is pre 9 11 with a candle stick. So he comes walking out. He's got the big cheesy grin. He puts his hand around me. And I don't know what it is these guys have a habit of putting their hands around me. He's like, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to yell. I'm like, they must have had some really good fucking air in that plane. Yeah, yeah. Completely mellow. So he gets on, he's like, I'm sorry. They spelled my name wrong. Because his last name is Fullington. He goes, they spelled my name wrong. And that's all it was. It was no big deal. So you don't owe me nothing. Let's let's go have some fun. It was in the middle of a freaking snowstorm that this happened. The weekend was a snowstorm. It came out of like nowhere. And we, we, we ended up getting like a foot and a half. The day before my show. So we get them. We're leaving the we're leaving the airport. We're driving. This is one of my favorite stories. We're driving on the highway. We just left that. We're getting, just before we get into the tunnel. Yep. There's a there's a car in the middle of the road. Right before us, there's a taxi cab. But in the middle of the road is a car with nobody in it. Just sideways in the middle of the street with nobody in it. The taxi cab in front of us gets the guy gets out of the car, runs over to the empty car, and starts rummaging through the <laughs> empty car. Now we can't drive in the snow. They haven't plowed right, the highway yeah. yet. So I'm like. Dude, can you move your car? And Sam is like rolling the window. Does listen, you fucking dot head. Get the hey, fuck, get the fuck out of there. And the guys were looking back. He's like, fuck. he was like, fuck me. He goes, I'm gonna get on fucking stab you, you fucking prick. I'm gonna fucking kill you. And he gets out the car. And the fucking guy jumps back in the taxi and takes off. Sam man, Sam is now running down the high down uh, Route One. <laughs> in the snow by the airport. He's like, I'm gonna fucking kill you. I'm gonna fuck. I'm like, no, don't get me wrong. I'm picturing Sandman and Zumba's. Oh fanny, yeah, oh fanny yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, full, full on Sandman running in his sneakers, cigarette running, hanging out of his running mouth, running down, <laughs> running down the highway. And I'm like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> he comes running back to the car. He slams the car door. He's like. Ah, right, go get that motherfucker right now! <laughs> I'm gonna kill him. I'm like, bro, you need to relax. We're not we're we're getting get you to a show, dude. We're getting, we're getting you back to the hotel. We, I just, I need this night to end. He's like, listen, listen, ah, I'm, bro, just fucking. I'm, I'm trying to calm down. We're driving through the tunnel. All of a sudden, like ten seconds later, I'm not gonna divulge it, but 10, 20 seconds later, he's like, it's Nah, all, it's man, all, we're all good. good. It's all good. No big it's deal, all dog. Yeah, it's okay. So we get back and we drop him off at the hotel on one night. He's like, hey, you guys want a party? I'm like, no. Yeah, so no, we're good, man. No, <laughs> just staying here, bro. Your night is done. <laughs> but I, that's one of my one of those weird-ass stories that fucking comes up when just I think of those Just sticks guys. in there forever. It's always yeah. going to be the back end. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the mass transit thing. I, I didn't know that you were involved like that where you got to, you had to testify during um, the, the That court came out case. of nowhere. Mass transit. What happened was the mass transit incident actually happened. It's a Revere Tra- Mass, right? Revere Mass, ECW. Uh, he ended up tagging with Devon Dudley. And they wrestled. Uh, not uh, the Eliminators. Yeah, the, no, he wrestled uh, the gangsters. It was okay, the gangsters. The gangsters. Okay. He got cut open, bad, the whole nine yards. Yeah. What happened was 
um, he actually wouldn't have been in that match. It would have either been myself or um, uh, Live Wide Dave Padula would have been in that match. Okay. What happened was we were supposed to take the midgets up. Yep. Um, Dave couldn't do it because of work. And last minute, I had to work. So neither one of us could go up. So one of us would have been in that match. Right. So exactly. last second, they got in touch with this kid. And him and his dad took him up, Mass right, right, yeah. Transit. Mass Transit shouldn't have been in the ring with any of them. He was barely learned enough wrestling just to be in the ring to with us. To get by, yeah. He was just enough. He was just a... He, now, did gift. you know that kid beforehand? Yeah, he wrestled with us. Okay, okay. We trained... We're the ones that kind of trained Working him. Working with him, yeah. Um, and his gimmick was just a Ralph Craner gimmick. He yeah. He used to dress like a bus driver, like a Ralph Craner. No, it was just it, yeah. It was That's just... all it was. And he went out, and you know, everybody knows about it, knows what happened. You're right. He got, he got, you know... Got gutted. cut. He got gutted in the whole nine yards, and he, uh, he sued ECW. And at some point, he had said how... Um, it had gotten out that we had trained a couple of guys from us. I trained them. So I was at work one day. I was like, my wife's like, um, you got a phone call from some lawyer? I'm like, some lawyer for what? He goes, a court case? I'm like, what? He goes, yeah. They, so I call him up. He goes, I'm such and such. Um, we want you to testify on behalf of um, Jerome Young and ECW. I'm like, what? Yeah, I was like, well, what are you talking about? And they told me what was going on. I'm like, oh, okay. So I told my boss. And a couple of days later, I had to go up there. So I go up there. I, come, I, remember, I remember vividly walking up in Boston, walking up the stairs of the to the courtroom, um, and uh, the kid comes walking by, and he sees, he's like, oh, shit. And he runs off. And yeah. I see him run off into, into the lawyer's office. Yeah. So as I get to the top of the stairs, me and my wife, I get to the top of the stairs, and there's Tommy Dreamer, Paul Heyman, Devon Dudley, and New Jack. Okay. So I, da, 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 I go shake hands, enter the mouse, and the lawyer comes out, tells what's going on. Now, I understand why why, why uh, Devon was there, and obviously why Heyman was there. Was Dreamer there just for support, or... Um, Did he have some sort of hand in, in the booking for the night? You know what? That's a good question. I don't remember that. I'm okay. not sure. Yeah, I'm just curious. <laughs> I'm not sure. I think he was involved with the... I think he had something to do backstage. Okay. I'm going to have to look into that. That's a good question. So, which it makes never, sense. It never dawned on him. But he was also heavily involved behind the scenes with ECW. Right, right, yeah. So I'm pretty sure that's why he was there. So I, I, I got to meet all of them. I told them, you know, they were like, thanks for coming down and... Uh, the, the whole thing was a kangaroo court. It was a big joke. Yeah, yeah. The, the whole thing was a big joke. I mean, I had to, I went and testified. They were asking me questions like, "What's juicing?" and like, "What's the body?" <laughs> yeah, thing? yeah. And Tiny the Terrible, they asked him the type of same questions like, "What's his name?" So he comes out with like a duffel bag. He's like, "Well, this is a body slam." He's got a duffel bag and he's body and he's body slam with duffel bag in front of everybody. Oh, that's tremendous. It was just it was just it was the weirdest experience. Um, they they end up acquitting him, right? Yep. You, know, you know, that's where he comes up the whole not guilty thing. Yeah. <laughs> but I remember going to court. I remember going to lunch with him. And uh, he's like, hey, brother, I just want you to, you know, just understand. I appreciate you helping me out here. You know, you do me a big favor. And I'm like, I'm not doing you shit. Yeah. This ain't about you. Right. And people could say, anybody that listens, they could say that I'm lying and this is the way it went down. If that's bullshit, you would never talk to them like that. I'm dead serious. I said, I said, I'm not here to defend you. I'm here to defend guys like me that he's closing fucking doors for. Yeah. I said, because clearly on the video, you see him, it happens. He goes to get slammed by Mustafa. He's fixing his pants, so he's clearly not out of it. And he's been telling everybody, yeah, "Oh, yeah. I was oh, unconscious," I was unconscious and all this. Yeah, you can yeah. see him clearly get up and fix his fixing pants. his gear. And then when he's getting gurneyed away, he's in there going, "Hey, ECW, ECW," yeah. and he tells everybody, "I never seen ECW more in my life." But yet he had about fifty vid- DVD tapes. You know, well, the you know, RF all, video all, 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 VHS is yeah, back in the day. Back, yeah, yeah. The, while the, watching the white cassette tape. Yeah, <laughs> watching cover. In, in the office and whatnot. So he clearly yeah. was bullshit. So I made a big point, but. And then after that, we all we became good friends with them. I mean, to this day, like Devon's one of my closest friends. We actually just talked to him like two days ago. Wasn't there an issue with his age as well? Uh, mass yeah, he transit? was seventeen. Seventeen. He was seventeen. Yeah, he 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 still be fucked up to the point where because they didn't really follow up on his age. He was seventeen. He said he was like eighteen. They was he was formally trained for like two years and stuff like that, which is all bullshit. He was trained with us. He was only trained enough to go out there and do like a three minute fucking spot job, with somebody. Yes. Ha ha, get him in another room. That's all he was there for. That's that's all he was there. Now, I, I, I always knew that you had some kind of ECW connection because I remember uh, when I was younger, like, uh, I heard that you were actually going to be... make me sound be, old, man. Stop yeah. it. No, I, I'm not I'll to, cut not you. To, not to do that, but I always heard you that... You've been cut with a mask on? That you not were, pretty. No, I have not, and uh, I'm very thankful for the mask, so I, I can never... Get caught, protects my phone. Oh, you can't never say never, brother. Jobs. Yeah. It's only material. One day, one day. <laughs> but uh, that's another time. <laughs> not now in your living room, please. <laughs> no, no, my, my wife will flip fuck out. <laughs> but uh, when I was younger, I always heard that you were one of the next guys to get signed to ECW. Uh, um, that was always the room that was going around. No, nah, it, it, 
it was kind of a rumor, and um, they a lot of people felt it because I did the trial. I um, see. Um, I knew there was some kind of connection. Yeah, no, they, a lot of people just assumed that because I did a trial and I was I started getting really in with like New Jack and whatnot, yeah, like, yeah. and the Yankee brought him in and whatnot yeah. for me. Um, that they assumed that I would start doing stuff with ECW and a, a tape was sent out and stuff like that. But um, it actually never tr- it would never transpire, and I knew that it was already told me because of the fact that I helped. I helped. I helped in the situation to help indie guys. Yeah. But if, if anything, it helped everybody else. It, it helped anybody else except for me, because I see. In, in theory, it actually closed my door. Yeah. Because it's unfortunate. Because it, it would turn into a situation where, because on an affidavit, I had to say, you know, they asked you, was you paid? Was anything given to you for your, your testimony? And right. I have to say no. If not, that would be perjury, and I can go to jail for that. Yeah. So in turn, I really could never actually do anything with them. At least, not at that moment. Later on down the road, possibly, but right, at right, that right, point, right. by by at that point, it was already, it was already said and done. So I actually, in theory, kind of closed the door for, in, in that aspect of it. So after um, you're running pi- uh, primal conflict, um, you're all done with Yankee. Where, where do you, where else are you working? Uh, everywhere and anywhere. At just that time, where, I kind of just I wasn't you. I wasn't bitter, but um. Everybody goes through that stage with kind of like, ah, fuck the business. Right, right. Um, I wasn't there, but I was kind of like, I was, I felt that Yankee had turned on me for no reason. Yeah. And um, now that I'm older in retrospect, I under- now I understand why things went the way were because I, I, I kind of was getting, um, not necessarily a big head, but I was having fun with Primal. Yeah. And, and it was like my, it was kind of like my, my, what I consider my new home because I wasn't doing anything that much at Yankee. That, because yeah, a yeah. lot of my folks, I really wanted to do the book and it left sour grapes when I, when the book was taken away from me at Yankee because they were bringing Savannah Souza back in to do that part. Yeah. You know, it was kind of like, a, like almost like a slap in the face and, and just because knowing that I sat across the table from him and he was just shit talking. Yeah, while he was trash, trash talking. You know, it just, it, it, it was one of those things that it just bothered me so, I kind of moved on and went that it was having our fun and whatnot, but it t- it turned into a money issue. That's why it never transpired. But, but for a year that I, for the few months that I did it, we had fun. I mean, we had New Jack, Sam, and Tommy Dreamer. Tommy Dreamer loved it so much he booked himself on the next show for him. Yeah, just him already by himself. Just just to do it. It was right after right after ECW just closed, and then uh, you know we had we had the early early stages of uh, Amazing Red, yep. Quiet Storm. Uh, the SATs. Yep. I got them off an R of video thing, and it was like, a was it the Future High Flyers VHS I, tape? I, I have no idea. I, I just somebody told me he's like, you need to check these guys out. They're out of like New York or whatever. I said, yeah. I said, fuck it, I use them. I booked them on one of the shows, and it came up. They were like, I don't. There was like nineteen of them in a Honda Civic. Yeah, they're just, they're just pouring out of the car. And I was like, I was like, God, these fucking guys are here yet? Shit! And then like all of a sudden, like ten minutes later, I'm walking all tired. I'm like, where are you? Because we all stay in the Honda. We all in the car outside. I'm like, <laughs> just, wow! I thought that was just a car full of trash. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, holy shit! But you know, we started using those guys, and nobody in the area was doing anything right. like what we were doing. Like we didn't care. Like we would do radio spots and be like, "Yo, fuck you!" You know, it was that type right, of shit. Yeah, yeah. And people just were like, over the top. We ridiculous. had a group. We had a group of fans. We used to call the Mark Squad. They did it. to go back to that salmon thing with that snowstorm. The, we were running a show on Sundays, and uh, the show we were running, we had Sandman. We had you know that whole situation went on. Um, we get to the building and um, there's a foot of snow on the ground, and we're like. Oh shit! Like, what do we do? We're like, we're gonna run this show. We're, at this point, we're, Salmon's already paid for us. Like, we're gonna run the show regardless. Right. We're doing the show regardless. Any money at that point is better than no money. Yeah. He, I don't. Well, it wasn't even that. It's like he was already paid. Yeah. So it's like if we have to put every one of the boys on the audience and let them be the audience, then that's what we're doing. Because <laughs> yeah. it was a dark. It was yeah. a dark place. Because where the ring was, you only had you can only use like. The Three ring sides, was right. all the people were right in front of you, and maybe a couple on the sides, but it's pretty much all in front of you because it, it was a strip club. You know, like a nightclub type slash yeah, yeah. strip club. And um, I remember just kind of going over the books in the back with Steve, and my wife comes. My wife was running the door, and she's like, um, "You guys need to come outside." I'm like, "I'm fucking. We're kind of busy trying to figure out what we're gonna do." Yeah. She's yeah. like, "No, I really think you need to go outside." Oh no, I'm lying. There was one thing that happened prior to that. We get a uh, knock on the door, and it's a it's a gentleman with his two kids. Okay. We're like, "Oh, well, how can I help you?" He's like, "Oh, we just want to know if the show's still going on today." And we're like. So did, what, Looking down the, the parking lot, like you just tracked through a foot and a half of snow from the, just, I mean, just to it, ask if the show's just, still just going to, on. Yeah. yeah, and I'm like, I mean, yeah. If you want to buy a ticket, he goes, Oh yeah, yeah. You, if you're still doing the show, we'd like us to watch. I'm like, Oh okay, yeah. We fucking ten bucks a ticket. Here you yeah. go. He goes, We'll be back. We're gonna take a walk down McDonald's. Whatever the kids. I'm like, we're like, 
Well, we made thirty dollars. Yeah, it's <laughs> screw it. So then, then my wife comes over like ten minutes later. You guys are gonna come on and check this out. I'm like what? This collective group of guys we call the Mark Squad went out there and shoveled. This Jesus whole Christ! Shovel, not with a plow, with a shovel, plowed the whole parking lot. And then we walk out and we finally go out there. We look. There's a line, like around the building, to the back of the building. It was like 200 people. Yeah. Out of nowhere. And I'm talking about like, like in a 45 minute span. Just filled up. The like thing. they must have been around the corners, like just waiting for the street to get plowed. It's like, and we just were like piled in. Holy shit. Now, the guys, we had this Mark Squad that used to come up and they used to help us when they got there, take everything out of the ring, help us set it up. And then they would leave and pay to get oh, in. Jesus Christ. <laughs> and then we would like, guys, we'll, we'll throw you tickets. No, 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 no. Believe in your product. They were just, we're going to pay. Support. We're going to pay. I'm like, so we got to the point where we're like, all right, this show will let six guys in, next show will let the other six guys in. Yeah, That's yeah. how we kind of worked it out with them. But it was about 12 to 15 kids and guys that would show up every time. That's what we do. And then we did our, our birthday show at the, Wake, uh, the Wakefield Civic Center. We drew like 550. And that's the show we were talking about. We had like Bilvis Wesley, New Jack, yep. Paul Mahoney, Sandman, um, uh, I believe Cronus was okay. on it, Cronus. And they weren't even the main event. The main event was Jamie Payne and Nemesis in a barbed wire match. Yeah. And everybody stayed for it, you know. But th those are the type of things that the, the people gravitated to. And we had these, these Mark Squad turn around. We had no advertising. We did our website. We did one radio spot, I think, the day of or the day before or some shit yeah. like that. And when we got to the building, we found out that the Mark Squad had made their own flyers. And, and passed them out. And them everywhere for like a week. No flyers everywhere. So some real dedicated fans. Yeah. And, you don't and, really see that much and now. And a lot of people, a lot of promoters were hating us yeah. for that reason. Because they didn't have that. Yeah. They didn't and we, have and that. we didn't ask for it. It just happened that way. Yeah. We were giving the general public what they wanted. Yeah. They wanted to see. They didn't want to see. They didn't want to see an arm drag and a headlock. They wanted to see an arm drag and a headlock shit. into a fucking barbed wire. Yeah. <laughs> that's what we gave them. So it, it was a different time. And I think at that time, I think my head kind of got a little swollen and whatnot. So yeah. I might have had a, a little chip in my shoulder. You know. I think but, that's um, part of the reason why. With the, yeah, the they, they, it, it just turned out. And then, like I said, the whole thing with Bradley was a big was a big uh, letdown to him. Right. Yeah. You know, I, I know I had worked the matches too, but I kind of just started flowing my way out of it. It was just, it, it was, it's that time. It happens, unfortunately, with this business. Now, you said the, the primal conflict thing was, just came down to money? It came down to money. The guy that ran it just didn't know how to run manage the money. The, manage the know, chain. Yeah, he didn't yeah. know how to do it. It was just like, if you made X amount of dollars, then take X, my, like I always wanted to take, open up a, a separate account. Yeah. Whatever so money we knew, made, yeah. you just put in that account, we roll it to the next one. His right. thought was like, I just made my money back. <laughs> it was like, right, we're just yeah. not going to get nothing done. So finally, it just it just collapsed, you know. So that's where that, and unfortunately, that happens to a lot of promotions. Now, what were you thinking going into the last show? Did you guys know it was going to be the last show, or uh, not really? It was kind of like uh, we kind of, I mean, we kind of had a feeling, right, but it wasn't, it wasn't really done. like we nobody was like, oh, there's a last show. It just like boom, one day we just like okay, it's over, and then like uh, like a year and a half, probably like a year and a half later, he decided to run another show in Attleboro. It was me and. It was uh, me and New Jack. Okay. And another thing that's... Did you ever hear about the, the infamous uh, bottles incident? The bottles. Is this the same match? Did he put like a trash can between your your legs and hit it with a bat or something no, crazy no. like that? This was a... Uh, we we had did some... Uh, we had... Me and New Jack had gotten some, into some heat. It's just stupid heat. Legit heat. Okay, so like not... So, yeah. Yeah, no, it was legit some, heat. Some real shit. And um, the match was booked and whatever case it be and he didn't want to talk on it. He had two bottles. Be at time. <laughs> One more. So he had brought a box, two boxes with about 30 wine bottles in it. Okay. <laughs> so come to the match, come time to the match and whatnot, I'm like, hey, this guy's going to act something stupid. I'm going to cut him. Right. I'm going yeah. gonna, gonna, gonna to stick him in his throat. So we go out there and he starts proceeding to throw bottles in the ring and there's about, you know, 30 wine bottles shattered all over right, the ring. Glass, yeah. So I just had a match. But people went crazy and we had like 150, 200 people in this little ass hall. For this one, for this particular match, so, other than just you know throwing the, the bottles out there, cracking them open, and all that stuff, didn't try to take any shots at you. No. Nothing kept it professional. No, we had. I mean, he ended up gigging me hard. Yeah, um, and you, I could tell it wasn't. It wasn't intentional. I, right, I right. know it wasn't because just I just watching. I could tell it wasn't. Yeah, but, he was just trying to get you some. Yeah, yeah, it was just it, it turned into it, but it turned into it, we 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 generated. Jack is one of those type of people that he he would make you believe that it's it's just like I'm gonna kill you, I'm gonna kill you, and then the last second it's like all right, we're we're good. Let's like, go. What are we gonna do? Yeah, kind of thing. But he he will definitely snap and fucking nigga up though. Yeah, he, I, he, I'm he, sure. He I'm sure. Fuck. He don't give a fuck. I was there in Danbury, Connecticut when he wrestled with Chris Hamrick. 
we take Chris Hammer. I was doing security for ECW, and uh, I remember he, he slams Chris Hammer on the table. He runs up to the top of the uh, the folded up uh, bleachers. Yep. Runs up to the top, and Hammer's sitting there, and I'm, I'm holding everybody back. You know, it's like it's like six of with Alice security. It's like six of us holding back. Jack just does his elbow off the top. Yep, <laughs> yep. Crushes him, cracks four ribs on his <laughs> Hammer. Just like kills him, all body weight. Yeah, just Crushing. drops on top. All of these people come crashing in. We're like security. I always forget the guy's name, but the guy with the blonde hair. Yeah, yeah. Just turns around, he looks at me. He's like, back the fuck up. He's dropping <laughs> elbows on fans. We're like hitting fans in the face with elbows and whatnot to back them up. Atlas Security did not play back in the day for ECW awesome. shows. Those guys are crazy. Those I've guys seen them yoke up like 12 year old kids and stuff. <laughs> Kid, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. <laughs> You're not getting your money back either. So, uh, Primal Conflict's all done. Where, do we, where does Jose Perez see himself? Uh, sitting on the toilet. So just no wrestling <laughs> at all? Or? No, no, I still wrestle. I, mean, I still do, um, you know, I wrestle for anybody and everybody. I started right, doing yeah. more stuff like in Connecticut. You know, I started doing stuff for um, Fred Yale in Connecticut. And, um, um, and DPW started forming down yep. with ECW and stuff like that. So, I mean, I still managed to still have my bookings. At that time, I, I had, I don't want to say clout, but um, yeah. people knew me and knew what I was, what I was doing, what yeah. I could do when I was able. So I was still getting um, consistent bookings. I just now... In my mindset, I was like, you know what? I'm not going to have a home. Right, yeah. I'm You're just going to work I'm just going to work. Because when I got to my point where I was so dedicated to being at home, I felt like the rug was taken off from under me because of somebody else. Or, right. You know, I, I put so much emphasis and so much time into it. Not, and I didn't care. I didn't want to be anybody's champion. I didn't care about going over. It wasn't right. about that for me. I just All I cared about was the overall show for everybody. I mean, everybody has their, their little big head moments where they want to have that spotlight. But and I'm not saying I didn't have that, but but you were But I also time. wanted I wanted everybody to enjoy it. Like a lot of people see, a lot of people don't realize that I'll go to shows and I'll get you'll still see me whether it's my show or not. Well, my first time even at a show, that particular show, I start like fixing entrance ways. Yeah, just sure. making sure everything looks pretty. Because it just it, it just irritates me. Because yeah. like you know, it's like I, I know I want to come on. But I want people to be like, wow! It drives me nuts when I go up there and I see like a curtain with like two paper clips. Oh like, yeah, yeah, what the fuck? So they not have zip ties. They don't, like, come on, guys. Um, but at that point, um, uh, PWF started forming, yep. and then I that that became my my ultimate home. Right, you know, and that's uh, what with the storm, the storm, Matt Cow, and again, this kind of goes full circle. You're back with TJ, yeah, guys Matt like Cow, all there. And we were running, we were running right up the street from here, from where we're at now. Um, we were running there, and uh, we kind of developed that little home. And I was back together with Bad Boy Billy Black. Um, I started developing a little feud with him, and uh, it, it was where it, it was where kind of it's like all of us, all of us kind of started, kind of, kind of came back and back whatnot. together, yeah. You know, and then we were able to influx a lot of guys that we like, like uh, like the score, and uh, yep. I started doing a little more tag team type stuff with uh, Pat Masters, and having my little fun with NECW with that type of stuff. So it it became it became fun again, you know. When did you start tagging with uh, Don Vega? Was that a few years after that? Uh, I Don Vega was actually somebody I trained when he first started. Okay, about, back in NEWA myself, and couple, again he's trained. He trained like we all did. He trained via. Whoever was there was able to show him right, something. Right, right. And um, uh, nobody really liked him. They thought he was awkward. They, they, <laughs> and he was just, he, not that he was, he was just learning. Right, yeah. You know, so a lot of people were kind of like, eh, about him. And, and Vega's probably one of the toughest son of a bitches out there right now. That's yeah, yeah. He's just a tough son of a bitch. But um, uh, that didn't come up until years later when um, I realized that there really wasn't any tag teams in New England. Yeah. Um, like I know, like the Logans were leaving. Logans had moved on to like EC. Uh, actually, they stopped for a little while, but they were doing mostly chaotic. Yep. Um, so I came up with an idea with them one day. I was like, and I knew we had done stuff at Yankee together. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? It's a good fit. I found I just happened to find a singlet online. It was perfect. It was a Puerto Rican singlet. Yep. I said, hey, listen, I got a singlet. Let's try it. And put it together. And we came up with the Rican having gimmick, and we did that for a little bit. And then people started complaining that we were too stiff. <laughs> we were trying to fucking kill people. I'm like, oh, well, it's like, well, we're just being us. You have a meeting about fucking new great things coming, and you want more believability, but you're pissed that people are gonna hurt. I don't get it. I just don't get it. I don't get it. So earlier, you mentioned how you um, you came back to, to Top Rope and you worked that the last real big sellout show at the PAL mm-hmm. uh, with no names on it. it was you and Brickhouse yep. in the barbed wire match? How did that come about? Because you had said you had the fallen out. With top rope, I had the falling out, and I remember, um, I remember going to one of the shows one day, 
just um, as a fan like, just as a fan just you know just to, I knew the show was going on I was going to go up check it out but I went up with Pretty Boy uh, Pretty Boy and I was on my old attack partner at the time and uh, I was like hey you know what what the fuck was that <laughs> I, 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 I think a fly something. or something <laughs> yeah. um, we went up and, and Tony Manning was like oh yeah you know we guys just jumped the railing and you know we'll, we'll reestablish it and it was, everything was cool like it was like nothing ever happened that's right, how it yeah, was yeah. And again, now in retrospect, I realize that you know what, no matter how much talk, how much shit you talk about, something, sometimes it just it doesn't mean nothing. It's yeah, just yeah. it's whatever. So we did the deal and whatnot, and then Pretty Boy just couldn't come back anymore. Okay. Um. So me and Briggles had to talk, and we're like, yeah, let's, let's do this, and um, we end up running a, uh, I think it's like four matches leading into the barbed wire match. So okay. We booked this for it. And it was like a setup, like he'd go over, I go over. Blah, blah, blah. It was a big build up. Um, the barbed wire match almost. Let me put it this the bar match the bar boy match almost never happened and we probably wouldn't be talking now outside of me being in a wheelchair. A lot of people don't know this. Um we did the match. Uh, it was just a straightforward match. Yep. And the finish, it was me going over, but it was the finish was supposed to be him going for a uh he's gonna hit the pile driver. The sit out one that he does, yeah, right? That, that, which he doesn't do anymore because of that. Okay. I don't know he doesn't do that anymore. And um it uh it didn't go right. If you if you yeah. remember what happened with, with Austin, the type of situation where it was just it kind of slid out, head poking out, yeah, through, I yeah. just kind of poked on. I went instant numb. I was instant numb for about thirty seconds. I ran, couldn't feel my arms, none of my extremities, and whatnot. Couldn't feel nothing. I could feel it all coming back at about thirty seconds, a minute. It was the craziest feeling of my life because I couldn't feel anything. But yeah. I, in my head, I'm going, we still have a spot. We still have a spot because the finish was supposed to be me flatlining so, him. Yeah, so your brain's still just wrestling, so, wrestling. Uh, so it, 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 everything happening, I remember him picking him up. I'm like dead. And I instinctively just grabbed him and hooked him. But I remember the next day, my neck was like... <laughs> Swollen out, I yeah. I, I, I was like in pain for like a week. Jesus. And I have spurs, man. I have legit spurs, man. Yeah. From, rest, from wrestling in high school. Um, so I, I couldn't like... Do anything. So I, it was. It was. It was one of the scariest times for me. Now, did you think time off? Like what? You know. No. Just <laughs> me take time off. Just kept going. So you, you leaving again? Bye. <laughs> Bye, Paul. Bye. So that happens, and you decide. Uh, well, you know. I, I was freaked out for a little bit, and yeah. Uh, it's funny how things go full circle because when I had split him open, yeah. I was in. Now this, keep in mind, that was years prior. Years, yeah, early. Now this is years later. That happened, and he was just a wreck. He, yeah. he didn't know what freaking he, out. He was like. freaking out about that. Um, but to this day, I still say, I said, it, it, Prick, I was one person that I, I have complete trust in. Yeah. Um, and I knew it wasn't his fault. It wasn't. It was just when we step in the ring, anybody steps in the ring. It, we take our own lives and somebody else's lives in our hands. It's, yeah. a, it's a double-edged sword. So I don't, I don't hold it against them. It wasn't. It was never like that. And um, thank God, nothing, nothing came out of it. But yeah. you know, it, it, it bugged me. It, it bugged me for a little while. We moved on, but then it, it just built to that, to that barbed wire match. People were just like, and again, it was still, it was still that early stage of, of, of uh, that this hardcore was, this was kind of six. stuff. Yeah. It was still that early stage. Not even not that. Not that it was still good on the ECW because they were already closed, but it still had some viability to it. Yeah, yeah. But it was still early, uh, early multimedia. Okay. So, it, so not much internet yeah, stuff. It was, it was it's... getting out, but it wasn't like too. So it's still, yeah. The believability was still kind of there, and uh, people just didn't. I remember going in. I remember. I remember going to the show uh, late. Showing up the show late, but I remember uh, one of the guys showed me. Uh, Picture, yeah. You're taking a snapshot picture, and uh, of the crowd, of pre oh, pre doors opening, yeah. And uh, the the it went down the street, yeah. Like last night, it went down the street around the block, but it went down the street around the block around the block. Okay, yeah. So, so they were on the other block. They wrapped, yeah, yeah. They wrapped all the way. And around. I remember saying, "Holy shit!" And I remember going up. I remember getting there and seeing the barbed wire and then going up. I went up and I was like. Going off the match, I was like, holy shit. There's a picture of me floating around. They just posted I was looking around, holding the thing in my hand. I'm going, wow, there's a lot of fucking people here. This is crazy. But it was fun. Oh, I can only imagine. It was fun. Things I did, just stupid shit I do. Yeah. Well, you, you mentioned uh, during your retirement match that you you and uh, Brickhouse Baker are just uh, sick mofos uh, yeah. who uh, just like to beat the crap out of each other. Yeah, I didn't mind doing the hardcore stuff. I mean, he doesn't mind doing it, but uh, that was never his. 
his genre. Yeah. He believed in the old school aspect of a hardcore, like the Terry Funkish things. But um, for him to just to do something, it, it wasn't like he, he wanted, he needed, and I never got it until later on, but he, he needed a story behind it. Just not to like, like last night fit per se, because there's a story already with us. But for us to just go, hey, we're going to do a barbed wire match tonight, he, he wouldn't do it. Yeah, you need because some they, kind of build up. Yeah, there was no reason to do it. There had to be a reason, which is why I think the barbed wire match was so successful. Because it was the first time that we ever did the, it was the first time ever being done there to begin with. And, um, it, and it was the fact that people already knew me prior to doing what I can do in those type of situations. And Brick, people knowing Brickhouse and knowing how he is, yeah. um, it, it was just a perfect mix. They knew fully. So it, it turned out to be that well. And it was great because last night it was said over and over and over again that he goes, the last time we had a, a huge house like this for non, non-stars was when you guys wrestled the barbed wire match. So I was really happy to hear that. Yeah. Now, uh, speaking of your retirement match, uh, you guys are both retiring at the end of the match. How would you decide uh, who went over? Uh, <laughs> I, know, I know it was kind of. Do you want to know who? Really you want to know when we just who? You want to know how we decided or when we decided? Uh, when and how? I heard something about flipping a coin. I, I know that was mentioned. No, you know we just you know how we decided when we decided. How's that? In the gorilla position. Just hit it right now. <laughs> <laughs> In the gorilla position. Yeah. <laughs> um, Brickhouse opted to put me over. Um, I had suggested me going over only, um, because leading into the barbed wire match. We had did the thing. He went over in the barbell match. He went over in the other, he went over a lot of key matches we had. Yeah, like the bull rope. We did a like bull rope and all this other stuff. He went over, and then he was like, he goes honestly, he was like, I really don't give a fuck who goes over. Yeah, I really don't care. It doesn't bother me. Um, but he goes, but then he goes, but honestly, it makes more sense for you to go over because it's just it's the progression of the thing. Yeah, but we really didn't figure it out until we walked. Yeah, That's walked pretty out. funny. Like we didn't tell the the ref anything until like um like at the gorilla and he's like, Did you tell Barbara? He's like, Yeah, she's she loves that. <laughs> like, all right, oh make that music. <laughs> it was like that. Yeah. But that's what me that's it's funny because you can't get guys to do that. Right, right. Yeah. God forbid you tell two guys are gonna work and I was like, I'm not gonna tell you shit until you get in the gorilla, gorilla position. Guys would freak out. Right, yeah. Guy would guys would freak out. They wouldn't know what to do. They'd be like, uh uh, what do we do? Don't worry about <laughs> yeah. it, we'll tell you. When are you going to tell me? If you told a wrestler right now, I'm going to let you know what you're doing, and then you don't tell them, they will haunt you. <laughs> They'll follow you up until all your night. Match. <laughs> they will haunt you all night. I've done it on my shows yeah. just to be a dick. <laughs> just to be a dick. Just for the fun of it. I've gone out there. I've sent guys. This is my book in logic. I have sent guys out for their match. Change the finish. No, no, no. Not even change the finish. But I have to, screw the finish. They didn't even have the match. I let guys <laughs> go out for the match. And as soon as they get in, just before they lock up, I'd send a, I'd send a manager out to cut a promo. Just yeah, some just, random, just, to, just, just to some throw random match that's supposed to happen later on. Just boom, nope. go out. There. And the guys would be like, <laughs> I wouldn't <laughs> tell the ring announcer, the referee, no, I wouldn't tell nobody. Brian Cairo was great for it. Brian would be like, Brian be across the room, like Cairo, come here. What? Go out, cut a promo on what? I don't care. Just just how, go. how fucking rain falls out of the sky? I don't care. Just go cut a promo. I mean, he knew it had to be wrestling related, but he would go out there and cut a promo. Yeah. And guys would be like, oh, shit, what are we, we're locking up. Yeah. Like, we missed something? No. But you, but the reasoning behind it is, um, on camera, you can't fake that. Realism. It's just instantly real. I'll give you a prime example of realism. Um, I wrestled RWA, and um, I want to put RWA over. Oh yeah, they definitely do. We'll, we'll um, get into more some of that at the end. By the way, I'm having fun. I know this is taking long, but I'm having oh, fun. Oh no, dude, this is, great. This, is this is gonna be like this, a long, this is not long podcast. We, we've, we've done some like uh, four hour ones before, man. So this don't is even, really fun. I like oh, this. Yeah, anything goes on the Mac yeah, cast. There's I, I no like format. This. We just this get into like a whatever. This is part series. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like Scott Levesque's uh, <laughs> podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I um the Levesque trilogy. I like to call it. I had talked to T Phoenix from the RWA, and I had said um. And listen, before I, I get out of that, I'd like to get an opportunity with just, uh, Jason Devine. Yeah. And um, just something about that kid. He's just such a good kid. I just, I, I just really want an opportunity to work with him. You know. Yeah, well, I, I'm a big fan of Devine, and, too. He's you a good know, nothing kid. crazy. We did it at the chop shop. Yep, yep. Nice, well, we were there. We, we watched. Right, nice, easy stuff. And uh, what was what? all I cared about was the ending. He's like, well, who's going over? He goes, oh. He goes, well, T was like, you're going to go over. You're going to go over. Yeah. And Devine doesn't give a fuck. Right, like, right. Yeah, of course. Was that, hey. Divine's like, what do you want to do? I'm like, I'm like, what do you want to do? He goes, I'll do whatever you want me to do. I'm like, 
what do you want to do? You tell me what you want me to do. I'm like, we're going to go around in circles about this shit. Yeah. <laughs> no, but, no, you tell but me that's what you want to do. That's respect. Yeah, yeah. He was giving me the respect that yeah. he thought I deserved. So we had a match, and um, I said, this is what we're going to do. I said, at the end, we'll do da-da-da-da, whatever case may be. At some point, I'm going to pick you up for a, for a cradle driver, but when I pick you up, I want you to inside hook hard. So I would really want to get that fake, you know, that really that, that big uh, pop. That you're yeah, always yeah. like right there, one, two, oh shit. Yeah, get that. And then I just drill you, and that's the end of it. Yeah. So we had, we had that planned out. So I tell him, I said, well, no matter what you do, do not kick out of it because I'm going to kick. Don't just. Right, yeah. You want to hold it as hard as you can. Nobody else knew, so I told the ref. Just I, th- I think. Uh, Santana? I don't forget. I forget who the ref was. Uh, no, I think. It, I, uh, Oh, Mosier, Scott Mosier. Scott Mosier. Oh, it was Mosier. Yeah, it had to be Mosier. Yeah. had to be Mosier. So I told him, and I told him, I said, oh, so I'm going to put the vine over. <laughs> Don't tell anybody. So I, I remember doing, we do, we do the spot, hook him, go up and over, and I remember when he hooks me for the small package out of that, I link my arms like, tight. So like, you're holding tight. him too. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. I'm hooking him hard. <laughs> and he's like, one, two, and he's like, oh, shit. <laughs> one, two, three. And he powder, he, he rolls off, and he, he's like, <laughs> so he's, he's celebrating, looking, he's but in shock. He's, he's telling, he's telling Moses, he's like, "Oh shit, he's pissed." Oh, he's like, "Oh shit." That's a so if you ever remember, if you watch it, if you remember, he comes up, he celebrates, he comes over, he's just thanking, he bows, and he leaves. Yeah, yeah. He, he bounces leaves. out. Yeah. He goes in the back, he's like, "Oh shit, I think I fucked up. I think I <laughs> fucked up. Oh shit." <laughs> and I'm saying, I said, I call him back out. I'm like, "You like that?" Huh? And I told him, I said, "Dude, don't worry about it." I said, "Made it made no sense for me." It's it's, it's I felt honored that T wouldn't want to put me over you know, for whatever reasons yeah, yeah. or whatnot. But it, that doesn't do nothing for him. Right. That does nothing for him. Especially when he was just on a, on a cusp of starting to do something else, a new story yeah, with him. Yeah. It does nothing. In fact, all I did was just elevate him to help him because now we can say, oh, you know, I beat the, for my whatever. Right, right. Whatever, yeah. you want, whatever you want to spin it. New England Pro Wrestling Hall of Famer. Yeah, exactly. Yes. You know, it, it, just, it just helped him. It, yeah. it, it, makes no, it makes no sense for me to do that. So he was, he just he was like all of a sudden back, but it was great. It was just one of those just great things. But nobody does that. Nobody really does that shit. Now, can I get your opinion on RWA? Shoot. Uh, you shoot. I want. Oh, that's I your opinion. Oh. No, not my opinion. I thought you were gonna ask me like I, something else about it. No, I I, I just want to know uh, what you think about the company as a whole. R- RWA. How, how did you get involved from the from the go? Um, RWA had a gym right down the street from my house. Okay. Um, I had heard about them on the news, some stuff that went down. I'd seen yeah, they, they were doing shows in, their in backyard, the backyard. And then, and then, yeah, people turned them down. I had the, the cops were called. It was like the, like the city shut them down, there. yeah. Um, but they were doing some shows down the street from my house. And um, I kind of walked in one day, and I was just, you know, seeing what's going on. And we just started chit chat and I kind of um, jumped in some of the training sessions. And I, they, had some, they, had a sh- they had a place up in Cumberland yep. that I kind of helped out with. And I was just kind of jumping. That's where I met JT. Yep. And um, we did some stuff there, and... Um, Realized that I, I hate the, the 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 term backyard because I yeah. feel that what they're doing is is very much similar to what I did when I started the self taught kind yeah, of you know that type of thing everybody helping everybody thing. exactly you know and when now the age of YouTube and this and that everybody can learn to do anything yeah you know um, but I seen I seen some some guys there that had um, some interesting potential I I met um. Uh, Jimmy Hansen there, yep. and he had did some like any any CW shows and stuff like that. But a lot of people just looked at him like, "Oh, look at this fucking guy." And um, I don't think he gave himself. I don't think Hansen gave himself enough credit. Um, I've watched Hansen wrestle when he when Hansen would wrestle on his own where he feels comfortable. Yeah, he's 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 a remarkable talent. Yeah, and he just never gave himself enough credit to actually push Branch it out, out there. And, yeah. It just never it just never really translated for him. Um, but I got to meet him and guys like uh, Antonio Tama, yep. um, which is another really, really good talent. So I know that was a guy that you kind of... Um, you, I took you, to him you very to say, well. You took him very well. I know I you pushed him, him for, when you were doing the FSW stuff. Yeah, I took him really, really well. And J- JT was another one um, that uh, I started. I booked him after I seen him work Brickhouse, as a yeah. matter of fact. And um, I had heard about him and I knew he was there. Um, and I heard a few things about him that he kind of had like, starting to have like a he had a little little big head prior to whatever case but I didn't know him so it was whatever yeah um, but uh, I seen a bunch of potentially good talent and a bunch of guys that 
they knew they weren't going to go anywhere else. They were just having just they wanted to have fun, fun. And, yeah. and and I and I can relate to that. Yeah. So for me, it was, it was it was fun. I was like, this is actually pretty cool. This I, I like. That. I can understand this. T's a great guy, um, and I I personally feel RWA now where they're, where they're standing now. Um, I just I feel that they're at that they're at that stage where they, they there's right before like they need that one little, little jump. bump that yeah I, I laugh a lot of promotion because a lot of people talk shit about them hardcore a lot of people talk shit a lot of people a lot of wrestlers talk shit about them but yet they all come knocking on the door they want to work for them right and which makes me laugh you know it and, makes and, me laugh because it, prior to me going there nobody was working for them right nobody want nobody's really working for them I'm not saying it was because I could be wrong by that but that I could think it was just me. Um, so a lot of different, a lot of different younger talents started coming in, like the Hoods, you know, and, and uh, uh, you guys. Yeah, yeah I was saying uh, <laughs> Minutemen, Minutemen and whatnot. Um, they just trips, bring, Triple H is there now Trip too. Is there yeah. now, you know, they just uh, count uh, the riot. Yeah, right. There. All these guys that I know are now elevating that game and whatnot. And they're now stepping up the game, and people are starting to notice that. And, and that's the whole idea. So I'm. I'm, I'm um, I'm optimistically happy uh, where they're going. What, what's they going for the future where, of RWA. Where the direction they're going. Um, they're, they're, it's a great opportunity for a lot of young guys. It really is. They, they, got, a, they got a good, dedicated roster. And I got to say this again. I said it, I said it at that show when I wrestled Divine. And I'll say it again. There's one guy in particular there that really doesn't get the credit that he deserves. Tom the Bomb? Yeah, Tom. Tom, Tom puts in a lot of Tom work. Tom Billings, man. not only behind the scenes, but in the ring. Yeah, he he knows he's not trying to become the next big thing. Right, he's not trying to to go to. He's not trying to be that weekend guy that wrestles every week. He knows that. Yeah, but he goes out there whether he's being baby or heel, or just being a complete idiot. He goes out there and gives you a hundred and fifty percent every single oh, yeah. time. And he may have his mood swings and stuff like that, but he has never treated me wrong. He's never said a bad word. To Nothing but a nice guy. And, and he, I just feel he doesn't get this, the recognition that he deserves. I mean, it, it really makes me laugh, man, with a lot of guys who you see that trash on the RWA. And I'm not going to drop any, speci- yeah. any specific names. But, uh, you know, we'd be in a locker room and they'd be like, you guys wrestle for the RWA. Like, why do you do that? Blah, 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 yeah, blah. Yeah, why do you do that? Why? Because we'll wrestle for them at the gym. And then, and then do they the, do the live show the live and they draw 300 people. They'll draw three or 400 people. I did, their, I did the show two years ago with the cage and whatnot and they fucking, this place was packed. Yeah. And speaking of their live shows, production value on their live show is incredible. They got it all set up. They have um, um, Titan Trons for, for every single wrestler. Yep. They had T, T Phoenix, Tom Billington, and all those guys. And, um, they have they have they put oh, yeah, they, they have they have, a, they have a friend of theirs that I, I'm I'm I don't know if I'm not allowed to even Christian, mention. You know, Christian? Yeah, I'm yeah, not. Yeah, sure. You're allowed. I know. I, I know. He talked about him on okay. His podcast. I'm not sure because I know he was like a hidden jewel for them. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I kind of I don't want to say him, but we'll yeah. Say his full name, but Christian. Yeah. He. Uh, they. They've worked a lot a lot of and when I when I came in and started doing stuff helping them out to lead up to me in a Thomas Cage match I helped them redo a, like a big set for them for Dynasty and whatnot and helped them set up a stuff you know give my ideas how to set the trons and stuff like yeah. that I was very, I'm very big on trying uh, on the settings of things yes, yeah. um, the presentation exactly the presentation and they if they they've adopted that yeah which is great and I think this adds to them but their their live shows have has in, increased a lot and now with a uh, with JT getting a lot more exposure and a lot of things, and like they, they brought in Brian Fury yeah. uh-huh. and stuff like that, that's that's just generating more publicity for him because the only way you're going to get better is if you watch better talent. Uh, you, uh, work with better and talent. You, you work with better talent, and then and, and people get to see what you can do. You know, that's the only way you're going to better yourself. Yeah. And even with their uh, TV tapings, uh, you can go online, they have a lot of production value on there. They TV do- is, is, is leaps and bounds compared to what I've seen before. Oh, man. Tremendous. They have better. They have, they have more. They their TV stuff looks better than some stuff I see on TV. Yeah, <laughs> the, just you know the quality, saying? the graphics, just, all that stuff. They he is going above and beyond what you would normally see for an indie type of show that's running TV. So if you want to find out more about RWA, it's rwawrestling.net, or you can listen to the T Phoenix podcast on thematcast.com. dot com. Yeah, you can, definitely, ch- definitely check them out. I mean, at some point they they, they do the, the the gym shows and they're yeah, free yeah. and whatnot. The gym shows they, are fun though. You're they're, guaranteed to have a, a good atmosphere. time. You're guaranteed to have a blast in there. You know, it's just fun. So now I want to rewind a little bit before the RWA stuff. Um, and I, I know there's a lot of people out there that want to know about this, and I think this is something I, t- I talked to you about earlier. Oh. I want to talk about the Samoa Joe incident. <laughs> Samoa Joe, fuck Samoa Joe. So that 
ladies and gentlemen, that is <laughs> that is the incident. Now, now, uh, you were working for a show in I believe it was Somerset at the Somerset. Um, soccer center, right? Yep. And I don't I don't remember, I don't think either of us remember the name of the promotion. But U- UCW, U-R- U-R-W. U R U R W U R W. Um, Ultimate Ring Warriors. That's what it was. Okay. Now you you initially say you're not slated to face Joe, right? Yeah. Originally, I was I was helping the guy that was running. Cause the guy had no. This this falls back in the realm of a guy that a person that had money to do stuff and just had no concept. Yeah. So he asked me to help out, and I, I guess I think we had did two shows prior to that with him. And then he's like, "Oh, I want to, you know, I'm going to book Joe, and I want you to wrestle him." I'm like, no, well, let's get like Wagner Brown. Or yeah, yeah, bring it to like a local. Yeah, name I, I'm kind fine of with deal. staying in the back. He's like, no, 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 you've been helping me a lot. And it was like he was like throwing me a bone type of deal. Yeah, I'm like all right, fine. Let me tell you, man, that dude was—he did not want to be there. He was just being a prick all night. Like intermission came, he walked out the intermission like 20 minutes later. He was too busy in the back. He didn't want to be bothered. He was just being a just an all like prick the whole night. Just bad mood. Nah. So ultimately, what happened is like I ended up wrestling Joe. We, we we did a little thing in the beginning, and um, I do this thing where I slam a guy down and I do a an over the top rope leg drop. Yep, like a, from so, the outside. Yeah, from, from the, the outside apron. Like, 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 like a, yeah. you know, like a flip in. Almost like a helo, but you drop yeah. the leg. And uh, he, uh, the spot was like didn't move, go for it. I go for it. He didn't move, so I landed on him. Right. Oh well. And he flipped the fuck out. Yeah. <laughs> and he came up. And he, he, everybody said, like, oh, Joe fucked you up. He punched you in the face. And I said, Joe never touched me. Yeah. Joe never fucking. He, so the stuff in the match was all just normal. He, no, no. After after that, he was trying to be named. But he 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 wasn't like connecting. He was hitting, right, but right. not connecting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not like I was like, oh, my God, I got a black guy. Right, and yeah. And he, he, just, he just squashed the match. He went, hooked me for the fucking muscle bus, and that was the end of the match. And then he gets in the back, and he's like, what the fuck? You, you landed on my face. I could lose my eye. You know what I'm saying? I got fucking TV and stuff like that. I'm like, I told you to move. Yeah. <laughs> I told you in your ear to move, and you didn't move. Yeah. Oh, well. And I even, if you ever watch the video of it, you actually see me adjust myself in midair because he's not did, moving, did, so yeah, I ended up catching him that, across the yeah, top. Yeah, yeah. So he flipped out. And then uh, there was somebody in the back with a camera while he was flipping out, taking a picture. They're trying to take a picture of him, some shit. And then he just changed his attitude and just went towards him. He was like, who the fuck are you taking pictures of? Yeah. You know, you're, you're, the disrespectful shit. You know, uh, this is why I don't do fucking indie stuff no more. I'm like, then he had, a, he was, it was basically a big head moment. Yeah. So it was one of those things. It, I, I don't dwell, I never really dwell on it. I thought it was always kind of amusing. Yeah. You no. know, people can say whatever they want for him. I know. I was in the ring with him. Did you ever hear any of the backlash from that? Or no, actually, to be honest with you, we actually went out to dinner afterwards. You and Joe, yeah. Well, no, we we I went to dinner and Joe was in the same place. Yep. Joe was with a couple of people, and actually, we uh we ended up meeting up afterwards, and we said hi. And, well, and I said, "Hey, what's going on?" He's like, "Hey, I'm, hey, I'm sorry." Okay, so, so yeah, he was kind of so cool about it after scenes, after the fact. He we kind of chilled out and stuff. And it was a bit. We had we shared a bit, and that was the end of that. Yeah, but. Nobody ever knows. Everybody wants to see go by what they see. So yeah, always here. Yeah, like, yeah, I landed oh. on Joe's face. He was a miserable prick, so I'm glad I landed on Joe's face. <laughs> and he called the match home, and we went home because he didn't want to be there. Right. He was. He was. He told many people there. He goes, I really don't want to be. He was talking to some chick. I really don't want to be here. I'd just rather be home. I only took the booking for the guy's money because he's a mark. <laughs> so I mean, like, yeah. and I'm like walking by hearing it. And I'm like, oh, here we go. So it, it is what it is. It is what it is. And I'm, I'm sure when something like that happens, stories get stretched out. And I heard he punched you in the face, beat the crap out of you, and all this no, stuff. But no. there, there was no, he swung at me. There was no, He might have got one on the chin, but it wasn't like, oh my god. Yeah, he wasn't Joe, trying to put out, get out to knock you out or anything. He just started swinging wildly. I say, yeah, we've seen those Joe fire up flurries before, and it's not like he's trying to it kill you. Nothing. He's just kind of doing the deal. No, I, I, listen. <laughs> no, I think I think Turtle Wino would hit me harder by accident. Yeah, <laughs> at that moment. Um, I can't so, believe I just used the Turtle Wino. As I say, Turtle, Turtle, I think that might be Wy- Steve Wino's first uh, Matt cast uh, mention on here. I think it's, we're breaking boundaries. No big. I'll, listen, I'll, I'll put I'll put Wino over one real quick. I watched the Chikara match, like a, like a not a full match, just a little gimmick, but, you know, a little gimmick deal, and he was in it. I think it was like I don't know, it was like a thirty-two man. Was it him with a dragon? With no, a dragon no, involved? It, there was like there was like eight, I must have missed some like eight man thing, but he's all these dives, pow, 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 yeah, all these yeah, dives. Yeah. And he runs up and he's on the apron, and the, the, the apron's like four, feet, you know, like two feet off the ground. And he goes and he's like he's gonna, like he's gonna do this big moonsault, and he's like, oh, and he goes, plop, just a little baby <laughs> dive, and everybody saw goes it. wild. <laughs> and I was watching the video going, ha, ha, 
<laughs> this is amazing. This was ultimately amazing. It was great. It was so funny to watch. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the transition from being just a, a wrestler to being a promoter. Now, the idea for FSW, I'm assuming you 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 had the ideas to. No, ain't mine. No, that wasn't you. Okay, wasn't me at all. <laughs> so who? Where, where does FSW? F- come FSW into the falls play? back to uh, well, full back, spectrum wrestling for the people full, that don't yeah, know. Full spectrum wrestling kind of reverts back to my uh, beginnings with NEWA. Anthony Rufo, which is the Ambula fan, yeah, anyway, yeah. he uh, he came up with the concoction of opening of a, a gym. He got a, he came across a gym that was kind of already set up, and he was able to buy a ring and yeah. all this stuff, and it was a full place. Um, he got together with again Steve Stallion to promote wrestling, and uh, they wanted me on board. Yeah. So anytime Steve wants, anytime Steve just hit me up the other day, he's like, "Ah, oh, I'm thinking about running." Uh, okay. <laughs> so he. Uh, they got in touch with me regarding it, and I, the first time I that's that's that was the first time I seen Anthony was at the Hall of Fame, one of the Hall of Fames, and I hadn't seen him in a while prior to that. So we got to chatting about it, and he got in talk, and got in touch with me, and I came down to down to the gym. We started talking, and Donnie's like, "Yeah, we're gonna bring in this guy, bring in this guy," and I'm like, "That's not gonna work. <laughs> it's just not gonna work." And as, after we sat there, and started talking, I'm like, "You really need to worry about." I said, "Hardcore is not gonna sell. Yeah, you're, you're not gonna you're not gonna sell this place with hardcore. In fact, you're gonna get this place shut down." It's just not gonna happen. Yeah, it's, it's a different it's a different ball game now, and Donnie's out of the loop. Donnie doesn't know anything about Donnie being Steve Stallion. Yeah, doesn't know anything about the wrestling business now. He doesn't know anything about it. And um, me and Anthony just started talking. It was just it made more sense for me to come on board. And it wasn't that I was trying to face Stallion out because Stallion I'll give Stallion credit where credit's due. Stallion is a master manipulator. Okay. He can make <laughs> you hate you. He can make you hate him in an in a instant just by looking at him. And he's great on the mic. He's he's quick on the fly. You know his wrestling ability sucks, but he's quick on the mic. And that's that's what made Primal so successful was the way he was able to manipulate things on the web. Yeah. And, and on on live in front of you. Um. So I ended up working with Anthony on FSW. I said, well, if we're gonna do this, we need to do this right. I said we need to get lights in certain places because they're not gonna look right. I spent hours and hours and hours. You guys came to one of those, right? Yeah, uh, I've been to the gym. I, we never. Uh, we were supposed to do the show, but he hurt his back. Oh, okay. You are student with the setup. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, so we ended up putting like, lights and everything. It was real dingy and dark looking. And, but yeah. It was great. It was great. We had a sliding door. Nobody yeah, had yeah, a sliding yeah, door in its way. So we had a bunch of shit like that. But uh, that wasn't my career. That was theirs. And that was just something I was... You, you uh, kind I kind of just got a fall part into. Of, yeah. And I had, I, had the, I had the ideas of what I would like to see. And they were like, okay, we'll do this. We'll do this. And then the first show we had, we had um, Eddie Edwards come down and yep. stuff like that. So it worked out well. It was fun. But again, it, it ultimately comes down to money. Yeah, you know because my my, um, I didn't want to be the guy to call let's say call you guys up and say hey guys I got a show you want to work for free, I didn't want to right, be that right. guy. Yeah. I didn't want to be the guy. I didn't want I didn't want to build something on the back of somebody else for nothing. I didn't want to be that. Um, so if I couldn't if I if, if in in our post meeting was pretty much is like if there's not a uh, an amount to pay, then we're not running the show. Right. I want money up front for the talent that I give you. This is the talent I'm using. This is the payout. Yeah. Not that it was anything dramatic or you know extravagant, but it was but, something. But it was something. It was worth and it was worth them coming out. Yeah. And the guys were coming out for me. They they respect me. They knew that I wasn't doing the hurt. I'm gonna fuck them over and like that. Um. So then what I came up the what I came up with the idea was, um, I, I did a Wednesday, Wednesday night fights type thing. Yeah. And I told guys, but I would be up front with them, like, you know, guys come up. It's more like a, it's more like a dress rehearsal. Guys come for, up if you want to work. Show, yeah. Exactly. You guys want to work, get some ring time, get some ring time, but in gimmick. So you're learning a little more. And I did it more towards guys that are just coming up. Right. Um, I said, there's, you know, there's no panel like that, but you, I'm guaranteed you're going to have time. I don't care how many guys showed up. I'll make it work somehow. Yeah, th- there'll be enough. Um, for and and it, it actually, we did one. We actually, you know, we, got, did, we did one before the building got closed. Um, and it turned out well. We drew like 80 people for yeah. it. I don't know. And I was surprised. No advertising. It was just all Facebook. Just, you know, yeah, whatever. Just, and people showed up for it. And it turned out well. And um, any of the money that we got back, I made sure I made sure the guys got fed. Like I had pizza there for the guys yeah. one night, like water or soda. So it was like you know that's that's I contributed back in that aspect of it. And we did it, you know, to it, you know pay the bills or whatever. Of course, yeah. But I always made sure that the guys would take care of it. We had a nice little spot. We had a nice big locker room. We had another locker room for the girls to change and whatnot. And you know we, we was trying to do something there. It just 
Thin trench, thin trench, the town and closing up. Yeah, was, was, was there something, the building, uh, something they didn't about the turn building it, code? They didn't uh, want to turn the heat on, and um, uh, one of the other buildings, the, the pipes burst. Yeah. So when they came into the flea market the next day, there was like uh, eight feet of water Jesus in the basement, Christ, yeah. and they right through the ceiling. So they, they just condemned the buildings. And yeah. I, I ultimately, I think it was just... They were trying to get these these mills closed down, yeah. So a developer, a developer can come in and, and buy it. So we got pushed out. And that was the end of that. After that happened, forget it. We're done. Now you guys uh, would do like different things. You start to show off with like a party atmosphere, like like the Minutemen came out yeah. with like JT and Vern. We try to do some funny stuff. We I tried. To, we had we had the first year we had like couches and whatnot out there. We're doing like live commentary. Yeah, yeah. You know, while guys were wrestling one night. And, you know, old school, like, on-the-spot interviews. Like, I wouldn't tell the guys are going to get interviewed. I'd be like... Just, just run over to him with a mic. <laughs> yeah, and I'd get... And instead of having, like, a ring announcer, I had, like, a, just a nug. We had a, a, a Joey Eastman who yeah, was yeah. there. And he goes, well, what do you want me to do? I'm like, I don't want you to do anything but be yourself. Yeah. Just go out there. You're going to bring announcers, but you're going to be... You're going to be more of a ringmaster. You're going to be more like a, like a late-night talk show host. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're hosting the show. Yeah, really. just... And, that, and that's what I wanted. And people... People clicked with it because it wasn't like, all right, this next match is going one fall. It's like, hey, I'm Joe Eastman and I got big feet. How are you doing today? You know, it was just that type of, yeah. you know, just just corniness. You know, I didn't want, I didn't, I wanted the, I wanted the fans that were there to expect something unexpected. You know, they, yeah, they're gonna get a regular match, and I made sure that the match, this match and this match, didn't look alike. Right. I try to break it up in some fashion, but um, it still falls in the realm of the other realm that falls into now is the. Uh, I made this comment the other day is uh, wrestling now is in the verge of uh, everybody wants to be a UFC fighter yeah. <laughs> without being a UFC fighter. Yeah. <laughs> you follow me? Oh, yeah. You absolutely. know what I mean by you that? See, you see a lot of guys so now, now with like now MMA gloves at shows. Yeah, and, and, now, now, and, and that's where a lot of guys, now guys don't look like wrestlers, they look like MMA fighters, but they want to be wrestlers. They want to be called wrestlers, but not MMA fighters. But you 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 look like an MMA fighter. Yeah, <laughs> that means you, you that means you're a bitch to be a UFC fighter because you don't want to get hit. See, that's why you're doing this. Yeah, you're doing an MMA gimmick in wrestling yeah. instead. <laughs> so so you're you're basically a small Brock Lesnar, <laughs> baby Brock. You know so. And that's pretty much where that goes. And, and, and around that same time you were running the FSW, you were doing the, like a TV show too on the Rainham. The yeah, we did the, yeah, we did the random. It just, we had a kid that just randomly showed up in my building one day. He's like, hey, would you be interested in letting me tape your shows? Yeah. I'm like, I can't pay. I'm not going to pay you. He's like, no, 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 no it's just no, a project. Yeah, no. And I'm like, all oh. right. He goes, yeah, I'll bring like three cameras and three high-def cameras. I'm like, okay. <laughs> all right. And he goes, oh, yeah, by the way, I run out of the random channel. You guys can go there. They got all high-tech equipment. I'm like, okay. And I, I believe that's, uh, I don't say the first time we met, but that was how we ended up getting in contact again. Basically, yeah, because yeah. You, we, because we, we did, we uh, posted what do they call that show? Oh man, um, it was. Um, I gotta find it. I, I have it saved in my laptop somewhere. I gotta look, look for it for the name. Oh, that's gonna bother me now. God damn it, with you. But um, we posted like a video. Shoot from the hip. Shoot from the hip. Yep, you're right. Yeah, that's I remember hilarious. the first one we had Caleb Selsa doing it, right? Yeah. And he was like, "Oh, I don't know what the fuck. You know, I don't know what we're doing here today. It looks like nobody knows what's going on." And I get him in the back. I'm like, "What are you doing, asshole?" I'm just shooting like, what from are you the doing? hip. You shoot from the hip. Granted, but I said, "Don't you shoot from the hip, but don't make it look like shit either." <laughs> so the whole idea was to make it look like it's it's. You know, like shooty you know, like kind of shoot, thing, but, but not yeah. not just firmly say that nobody knows what the fuck is going on. What's wrong with you? Now we, we, <laughs> we had posted a, a video of something from the, uh, we do like the Monster Max show with like you know it's our show is totally ridiculous like, yeah. in a fantasy land. We've got Wizard of Oz and <laughs> Batman and parodies, and we do all this crazy stuff. And I, I guess you had seen it. We had yep. posted it online, so you contacted yeah, us yeah. about coming down to, to the thing, and we were all about it. And we came was down. Was that the one with Jason? Bl- we did the thing with Jason Blade and and and, and, and uh, JT. Was that what that one was? Um, yeah, that they were cutting. He had was cutting. Uh, JT was doing a promo yeah, yeah. on Blade, and, and stuff. that was like it's just just go out there, just just go out there, and then we had to do the whole thing over because yeah. the camera stops. <laughs> We uh, we showed up <laughs> so to, disorganized to the uh, the Rainham uh, channel, and you were there, and we were like, all right, so what are we gonna do? And you were like, oh no no, we, you, no just go out there. Just go out there, whatever the fuck you want. And we were like, uh, all right. So we, <laughs> like we went, just sat and we talked, and, and then you, we did some stuff in front of a green screen where we were like cutting a promo, promoting something, and you're like throwing shit at yeah, us yeah. from the background, <laughs> throwing our merchandise to us. We were, you threw me a broom. I'm like, I'm cleaning up all the deals of the t-shirts we got for sale. Yeah. Like, saying ridiculous shit. And uh, I, I think that was, uh, I, I remember thinking like, this is the way it should be done. This is a lot of fun. It's, it's got to like, be just, it, it can't be so... Everything so to can't the point, be, it's got to be fun. Now, do you think that's a, a big part of the problem? What, what wrestling is now? It's too overproduced. <sighs> it's 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 yeah. I, I personally, I mean, it it is. 
you have to have you definitely have to have structure when you're doing it because you, you're trying to get us you are trying to get a, a, a certain point across when you're the you know the low bottom indie you know fed and whatnot it's entirely different. you can get away with having that fun you know when when you're at the at a higher level well then yeah your your productivity needs to change a little bit um, and I, there's, there's a progression there yeah. but you still you still have to have flexibility for for fun you still have flexibility for um how should i say uh, um uh, i'm lost by a word i'm looking for here um spontaneity yeah. yeah you have to have spontaneity well you have to be able to like change something like in a moment you know and that and that that's a, a big problem well when it really comes down to it um it's really the guys have to be having fun too because if you have a bunch of guys that are going to the show and they have that mentality where I don't want to be here, what am I doing here? When, when, it, when, when it becomes work, exactly. it's not fun. Yeah. Nobody likes to go to work. It's true. When it becomes work, it's not fun. Wrestling is work. You're getting paid. I said this before. You're getting paid. It's a fucking job. Flat out. But it can also not. be a job that you really enjoy. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, I still enjoy. I mean, I still now that I'm out of it, I still enjoy wrestling. Yeah. I still enjoy watching it. Um, I watch wrestling entirely different now. I watch wrestling not for what's happening in the ring. I, I, I'll say it like this: I watch wrestling not for what's happening in the ring. Yeah. I watch wrestling for what's happening in the ring. Yeah. And the reason why I say it that way is because I don't watch it because of the entertainment value of the match. I watch to see how things are done in the match. Um, I tell students like all the time. I said, next time we, I tell students that still look at watch wrestling, like, oh my god, John Cena's out there! Oh my yeah, god, yeah, yeah. like, fuck John Cena. <laughs> um, watch, and I don't mean that because I know his father well. And I'm just joking. Um, watch. In case you're listening, in John. <laughs> <laughs> but what, regardless, what, no matter who it is, watch the match. Don't watch it for the value of what the, of the match itself, the hype behind it. Watch what happens, how they move. How they transition from one thing to another. That's what that's what guys don't do. Nobody does it. Nobody watches what they try to duplicate later. Those you, like like you're saying, the transitions between how they go from here to there. Those are the little things. Those are the little things that people don't pick up on. Exactly. I was always taught. I was always taught from from day one. From day one. And I'm gonna quiz you guys on this. You take a back bump. Take a back bump. Yep. You're in a training class. You take a back bump. You guys have already been wrestling for a while. You take a back bump, and you get up what way? The wrong way. What is said? What are you? What are you told? If you get up the wrong way, take it which, again. Which which way? Which way is the wrong way? To get uh, up? The wrong way. Feed in with the to the right. When you're getting up from the bump. Right? Yeah. Okay. Next time you guys watch Raw. Yeah. Watch every match and count how many times they get up the wrong way. Happens a lot. Happens all the time. Randy Orton does it constantly. Yeah. CM Punk does it constantly. John Cena does it constantly. They all do. Them. They all do. Them. I teach in different. I teach in different factor. I don't care if you're going left or right. You're always feeding. You always want to get up. because You want to feed to the left. Yeah. There's some instances. Especially watch the um, uh, the bump and feeds. Like let's say hot tag. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Watch those things and see how guys get up from the transition from up from that. Some guys will go all get up for the right, but you're gonna see guys get up from the left. And they transition back to the right. Yeah, so they because like a double position, turn kind of. Bo- thing. No, there's no double turn. It, it's still the same motion. Okay, they're going right in. They're still going back in. But pay attention how they get up. I bet you any money, money, you're gonna watch the next Raw, next SmackDown, next TNA, and you're gonna go, holy the shit! Look at that guy. <laughs> Jose was not fucking joking. It's never nobody ever catches it, but it happens every fucking show. Now, do you think it's just because the heat of the moment kind of deal? No, and they just it's, don't. It's natural body position. Just how they get up. Yeah. When you when you once you get used to wrestling one night, your body knows. I've always I've always taught and always trained body position, yeah. body understanding, where I am to a person. If I'm in the middle of the ring, if I'm if I'm if I'm away from the center of the ring, I should say. Yep. And I'm always taught to get up to the right. But I know my spot needs to be in the middle. Why am I going to get up to the right when I need to be in the middle? Yeah. Your body progression will turn you to the left. Yeah. It's instantly, it just makes sense. Nobody teaches that. We always taught, you get up on your right, you get up on your right, you get up on your right, you get up on your right. But if you watch any major play, up, go watch The Rock. Rock did it at WrestleMania. Yeah. <laughs> watch The Rock. They all do it. Is it? But if you go to a school and, you go, and they tell you, you're doing that wrong. Right. And that's bullshit because it's not yet. Not. So, wait, if the main players can do it, you can do it. So you're saying basically is as long as you're 
in the right position to where you're supposed to be, how you get up and turn, pay get there. The tra- it pay, attention, pay attention to transition, how things work. Just they always say, you work from the left, work from the left. Alberto Del Rio fucking does right arm fucking arm bars. Yep. <laughs> Why? Oh, because he's Mexican? No. Because he does, he's a fucking army. It's, you grab, it's, it's the army he's going to use. Yeah, it's the first time. If you want to hook your left, hook your left. Yeah. CM Punk, same situation. They, they all, everybody has, you eventually will find what feels right to you. There's no, there's no necessarily right or wrong. There isn't. They teach guys how to do shoulder rolls all the time. Left yeah, shoulder yeah, the roll. roll, yeah. Shoulder roll on what side? Left side, right? Yeah. Left side. Left side arm drag. Left side arm drag. Guess what? When you do a snap, when you do a... a snap mare, dude. Snap mare over. Roll on the right. How many times you do any, how many times you practice rolling on your right? When you do a snap mare, you're not taking a big fucking... Flip. Right, right, yeah. You're just, snap, you're just rolling over. Yeah. How many times are you rolling your, on your right side? Yeah. You need to learn how to roll to your right to be able to snap, man. It's never taught. I was taught that. So, man, students told me that. We used to do shoulder rolls 50 left, 50 back. 50 left, 50 back. So, watch it next time. Yeah. Next time you watch wrestling, tell me, you guys finish this podcast, you can be like, motherfucker. You're going to watch Raw on Monday night? You're going to be like, you mother- us, yeah. <laughs> you like, you it was right. a bitch. I'm going to see on my Facebook, shit, you're right. I'm just going to tag you on there. Ask, <laughs> ask Connor. Yeah. Ask Antonio Tama. Yeah. Ask Mike Grossa. I made them all do I was watching Raw one night, and uh, I made them all fucking watch. I said, go back and go back and rewind your shit and watch it. And they were like, son of a bitch. Yeah, so they just caught it right away. You would never realize because all everybody, all you're doing is watching. You're watching wrestling. Yeah. But if you're really smart and really looking for what you're looking for, you're going to watch yeah. wrestling. It's not like, oh, that's a nice move. I'm going to practice this move next time I go down to the gym. No. Right. You start no. catching Understand more like why he put that move in and how we put that move how in. How they're building this heat. How are they building the comeback? Kind exactly. Of and it's, nobody does that. Nobody does that. So, Jose, when did the idea of retirement come into mind? When did they come into mind? Yeah. When did when did you start thinking? Fifteen like, years ago. Yeah, <laughs> fifteen years ago. Um, I think the the uh, I've been kicking around maybe two and a half, three years ago. Maybe I've been okay. kind of I kind of slowed down a lot. I stopped the traveling. I yeah, did a lot of traveling yeah. up on the East Coast and whatnot. I mean, I went to California once, but uh, I, I'm not a big traveler. I really don't like. I, I'm I I'll get on a plane and go somewhere. Right, but you're talking but to get on a. I just to get in a car and drive to PA or something like that. It just it's in the beginning. I was like, yeah, let's go. Yeah, I was driving yeah. like the Bangor, Maine. I was driving to Canada and yeah. shit like that. It was great. Um, as you get older, it's kind of like nah. Just and um, so as somebody asked me, in fact, somebody asked me last night. He goes, oh, how come you never pursued it further? And, you know, then, right. Yeah. I'm like, well, I never pursued it further because I mean, I'm a family man. I got wife and yeah, kids, yeah. and my kids were small. My kids, my wife and kids grew into this business. Yeah. I was married before I was wrestling. So okay, we kind of, yeah, yeah. it just kind of progressed that way. And um, that wasn't a chance that I was that I was willing to take. Yep. So I was content not, you know, I, I still had my, my, my fun in, in shows and going places, but um, I was content not worrying about getting there because it's just, it wasn't for me. I personally feel that somebody in this business that is uh, already in a family trying to get there, you're, you're destined to, to, to destroy something your career or your family life yeah and for me my family life was more important so that's why i never produced it but it, it's just one of those things where you just have to really think about it think about where you're going with things now was, was there any uh, ever a point where you like uh, you mentioned earlier you were backstage wwf show did you ever do any tv uh doc matches no no i was, just, like I was back there just, just socializing okay i was back to socializing like i said i became really good friends with devon and whatnot and anytime he was in town we'd just be like hanging out and shit now you mentioned uh, you're doing a little, little bit of traveling. Uh, who's some of your favorite traveling buddies? Because I'm sure that uh, plays an important role on how much you actually enjoy traveling out there. It's kind of amusing because my traveling buddy was my wife. Oh, yeah. right. <laughs> traveling buddy was my wife. Fair enough. Travel, I didn't have a, I didn't a good have a, answer. It's a good I, answer. I, my favorite traveling buddy is the wife. Twelve years I didn't have a driver's license, so yeah, for yeah. me to get to a show was, uh, hey babe, you're my taxi tonight. Yeah. <laughs> so that's pretty much how that went. Um, we most of my travel memories were really just like local. I like drive up with like Don Vega or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But I really, um, if I had any, if I had any regret, it would probably be that I really never had that 
on my own. Let me just take off with a bunch of people into a car and just right, go yeah. and we spend you know spend the night out right, at, yeah. after a show or we had two or three shows on the same weekend. I never really had that two, because yeah, of me, yeah. I always had work. And like if I did work some, wrestle on a Friday night, I had work. So like I work Saturday, man. You know, yeah, so I gotta be I home. I didn't. I didn't have that. So I didn't yeah. have that that travel type. Um, if I had anybody that would that really stuck in mind, it would have to be Dave Padula. Padula, um, yeah. Um, Long time friend of mine. Um, another one I've done sick, sick shit with. Um, we've done a lot of traveling like, down to PA and stuff like that. But um, really, it was always, it was just, most of the time, it was for a long period of life, it was uh, just me and my wife. You know, we'd have people in the car with us, like Anthony or the Midgets or Dave or, you know, Vang or something like that. But yeah, it was, yeah. it's usually always, it's usually a lot of times, and, me and my wife. Yeah. So my, my wife was my road buddy, <laughs> which is beneficial. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. But yes. that's another podcast. <laughs> That's for the late. That's for the after. That's the late night podcast. The late night Matt cast. <laughs> now, that's where the earmuffs on. <laughs> now, Jose, before we wrap all this, this stuff up, I wanted to. There's a few like you know. Uh, what advice do you have to kids that are breaking in right now? Go to school and don't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Don't don't do it. But if you're going to go to no, school. no. If I have if any advice, when you see it on TV, they tell you right out. They say, uh, "Don't try this shit." At don't home. try this shit yeah. at home. Really. Don't try this shit at home. Yeah. If you're really interested yeah. in doing this, get involved. Get involved with a local promotion. Start in school. Get into get into high school freestyle, collegiate style wrestling, uh, martial arts. Just to get that basis. Get saying, that right? basis under you, um, and then just get yourself into a school. No. Nope. Get, get yourself into school or train with somebody that really knows what they're doing and whatnot, and get under them and and move from there. But you definitely want to get something. You don't want to just go into this blind. You want to be safe at doing this. I've seen, I've seen a lot of people get hurt, and a lot of things happen that, uh, you know, that really sucks. Yeah. So. Um, now, what schools in the area do you, uh, do you suggest them check out? Because I mean, we were talking about the RWA earlier. If I have, if I had to, lay, if I have to lay them out in order, it for me, and, and there's no disrespect to anybody, but I would have to, I would have, start with Brian Fury's. Yep, the Fury School, the, um, the, the New England Pro Wrestling, Wrestling Academy. Academy would probably be where I start. Yep, and then we go to the lockup with the uh, top rope. With top rope. Ryan Drew's running the and, trainings there. Exactly. And, um, you always get guys. Drew, coming Drew, in. Bob I, comes I'll say in. this right now. Listen, Drew, Drew is a, is an individual that um doesn't get a lot of recognition. Also, yep. Um, a lot of people, you know, a lot of people in a ways don't like him. He kind of rubs right. People. You kind of get that. He kind of gets that. He kind of gets rubbed the wrong way. But I've always people, liked Drew. That was always my thing. Like, I, oh, stop! You're just trying to get fucking more booking. Yeah, Shut up. that Shut might up. be Shut true. Fucking <laughs> <ass>. <laughs> <Fuckin> prick. <laughs> but in, in the scheme of things, though, it's, in the scheme of things, he's a he's a good talent. Um, he 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 has no problem putting anybody over or, or doing whatever it takes to to get the job done. Yeah. Um, if I had to put a stigma on him and. Uh, not, I'm sorry, not a as a wrong word. If I had to put a face or a name on him, yeah, he almost kind of fits an Arn Anderson. Okay, that old me. school. I don't know why. I don't know why, but he almost for me, I almost get that like the Arn Anderson, Tully Blanchard type yeah, of yeah. old school type of guy, and that's and I hope he takes that as a compliment because that's that's certainly. I, I mean, I don't know, see how that could be an insult because he, he again he doesn't get the recognition. I think he could. He's another guy that's not trying to go anywhere or do anything. He's enjoying what he has and what he does. Yeah. You know, but um, I would have to go there then, and then I would say the chop shop. Yeah, I mean, the, the chop shop uses a lot of different guys for trainings. Yeah, exactly. Was, right now they're using they're using JT as the head with, uh, and JT is getting a lot of a lot of publicity with Beyond Wrestling and and, and now with CZW and stuff like yeah. that. Um, he's getting his stuff um, there, and like I said, now Triple Ish is down there. Triple Ish is an, uh, another veteran in the area. Yeah, just really never got around anywhere, but he's, he's always very smart and knows how to. You know, position thing. He's 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 from my style of of, of training back yeah, in the day. Yeah. Um, so those are probably the three I would talk about. I mean, there's there's a one in Connecticut too. I, I'll mention also if you're further down, down that way is um, uh, uh, Von Schmidt's promotion there. Yeah, yeah. Pro wrestling, whatever that is. PWA or something. Yeah, I, I don't know what the PWA stands for. I'm not sure either. I'm assuming pro wrestling academy. So I, I, uh, probably pro wrestling academy. Yeah, probably Maybe. that. I always figured it'd be you know Von Schmidt's Wrestling Academy, but yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. But he's got some good guys down there too, so they, they, they're working a lot. So now that you're officially in retirement, what can some of the fans uh, expect from you? Uh, I'm sure they're not going to expect any upcoming no, matches. They're not going to see us. I retired. They're not going to see any matches. I'm sure you're not completely done with. We're on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, that. <laughs> he's doing the podcast circuit now. Well, listen, Brickell's basically. I, I, I guess. Well, now that we're both doing it, Brickhouse Baker's doing a lot of fishing. I'm just going to be doing, I guess, a lot more uh, 
uh, Call of Duty and drinking. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't sound bad. Well, I'm sure you can't be done with wrestling altogether. <laughs> I'm here, sure your face is going to be shown here here's, and here's there. The uh, uh, and again, somebody asked me last night. Somebody Facebooked it today. They were like, "Come on, you know you're not really done with wrestling. Look at Ric Flair. Look at this one. Look at like uh, Terry, Funk. Terry <laughs> Funk. These guys. I'm like, uh, yeah. You know what? I can never say never." But I could say no for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> I could say no for a long time. Well, I appreciate you not saying no to the Mac cast. That's yeah, a definite. No, I just, I just, I can't do it. I got, I got a really bad knee. I got a really bad back. Yeah. yeah and, and my, my thing is, is like, um, I had a little, uh, a little scare over the summer that kind of caught my attention, and uh, it just made me think a lot, put a lot of things in perspective. And I want to be able to hold my grandkids no time soon. Because I don't have any, yeah. <laughs> like an eighteen and twenty year old, no time soon. Yeah. But at some point, I want to be, I want to be able to walk and hold my grandkids and play with them and whatnot. I don't want to be these guys that are still holding on to what they had. You know, I did a show with a couple of legends on it, and it was just like, like limping to the ring. And it's, I don't, I'm like, I don't want to be that guy. I, I just don't want to be that guy. I've had my fun. I think you know, um, I think people have enjoyed what I've given them. You know whether good or bad. You know, but yeah. um, I think they've enjoyed it. I think I've had some my had my fun. And I think it's just time to to step. That's the bottom line, though, because sooner or later I'm gonna hurt somebody. Yeah, right. <laughs> it won't be me. I'm just somebody else. Yeah, somebody else might not me though. <laughs> now, is is there anything else that you you wanted to get? Any stories you wanted to tell, or anything else that you wanted to get in there before? Stories, stories, There's always stories. Of course. I mean, we've gone through but a on, lot on the spot though. It's, it's all, yeah, it's I, tough I gave, to throw. I tough. gave yeah. one one. <laughs> So we're ready. I, 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 wrestled, I wrestled Sabu one day. Okay. Uh, here's, a, here's a good one about promoters. Let me tell you something, you cocksucker. No, I want to. <laughs> you know who that is. Spada. Listen, I fucking made you, you cocksucker. I made you. You know what? I got Ric Flair booked. I'm like, shut the fuck up, you <laughs> fucking idiot. <laughs> I was working with, <laughs> with Spada for a little while. Everybody at some point has a Spada story. Everybody's got a Spada story. <laughs> so I remember... We we I started working with Spada. He wanted me to do go under the hood, and I'm like, whatever. You're still paying me, whatever. Yeah. So me and Don Vega are under the hood. We're doing these Iraqi gimmicks. No okay, offense to yeah, Iraqi yeah. people out there, but yeah, we were terrorists. Yeah. <laughs> um. So we're under hoods. We're wearing like camouflage and all nine yards, black masks. And um, the first night we're doing it, Sergeant Slaughter's booked. Okay. So it's Sergeant Slaughter. It's um. Sergeant Slaughter. Sergeant Slaughter. Um, Kenny Phoenix and um, Shockwave before he became like yeah, big Shockwave. Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we had this guy called the ro- the, the 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 Roadmaster or something. She was like a manager, some, some idiot. And um, in the ring is so- it's, it's this young cat that's with us in the yeah. hood and Shockwave and the Sergeant Slaughter's out there in the the oh the Highwayman that's what his name was. Okay, he was supposed <laughs> to go out to do some spot. And we're not involved in any of this. Whatever shit. he's doing, yeah, yeah. All of a sudden, he blows the spot. And you get a, you get a picture. We're inside of an ice skating arena. And there's probably about 100 and change, man. I forget, like 100 and change or so. And there's a long, we have a you know, pretty long little stepway. And he blows the spot. And Spotter runs out there. And he's like, Listen, you motherfucker. <laughs> Keep in mind, they're about. You know, in the aisle where there's about 90 kids. Right, In this right, aisle right to the, the walkway yeah. to the ring. He's like, listen, you cocksucker. You're blowing the fucking spot. You motherfucker. I'm with Now, me and Vega are looking through the curtain, watching what's going on. And all of a sudden, we just look. And all of a sudden, he's just, yeah, he's halfway down the aisle. And he looks back at the curtain. And he goes, Don Vega, Jose Perez, get the fuck out of here. Get him the fuck out of here. And me and Don Vega behind the curtain, like. What? <laughs> what did he just We're say? in masks and shit. I'm like, you fucking kidding me. <laughs> like idiots. Yeah, yeah. Run out there. there yeah. <laughs> Run out there. We're putting a the fucking deal to him. And then you know, we, we hook them all up. And um, we get in the back. And I'm like, he's like, yeah, you fucking fired. You piece of shit. You, you fucking. He was there the next night. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Spot always ran the double shots. He was my, my mark on one was that night was like at the end we're going over there. Kenny Phoenix, pl- you know, plotting everything out. Sergeant Slaughter comes walking in. He's like, guys, I just want to know, you know, in that rugged voice he has, just want to know where where you want me to be. And he's like, all I want to know is who's taking the cobra. Cool, oh, that's me. Yeah, hand me. Up, hand up. That's this guy right here. I'm taking a clutch. So we do that. It was great. But he next night, Highwayman's back in the show. One yeah, night, like just, nothing ever happened. He's like hugging him and shit like that. Just a spot or reset button. He's just. He, <laughs> So spot so that I think that was I think no right after that's when I wrestled Sabu we get to sit match Sabu Sabu and Perry Saturn 
Ugh. Don't ever get Perry Sands bad side. It's a rough, Sabu, rough night. Sabu gets me working over the match. He's like, oh, by the way, don't pull my left arm. I'm like, huh? He goes, yeah, I got tore bicep in my left arm. I'm like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> all right. um, shit, okay. So we work the match, and it's hard because I can't be me, so I got to be right, yeah, fucking yeah. brawny fucking you know, military guy. So I'm hitting him, and he's like, all right, whip me to the corner. I'm like, yeah, wait, wait uh, a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, okay, yanking the whole oh. way. He's like, ah, <laughs> down, down the ring and whatnot. <laughs> and I can see his arm just like flailing wow. away and whatnot. <laughs> and then we call the spot, and then uh, it, 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 we end up miss chewing where we stood, and I end up fucking something happened with the fucking spot. And Perry fucking hit me the wrong way, and he's like, what the fuck, guy? <laughs> he's like, fucking Sabu, move. He goes, <laughs> it was crazy. But then there was one other night with. with, with and anybody you get a podcast, you always got to ask him about Spada. Yeah, Spada's yeah. Spada's oh, an yeah. individual. So we go. He is the character. We're walking out. He's paying. He's giving my payday. We're walking out of the building. And uh, he's like, oh, Jay, I want to talk to you. I'm like, oh, here we go. He said, like, I got a great gimmick for you. <laughs> yeah. I got a great gimmick for you. I'm going to get you out of mass. I think I'm going to make you a bailiff. I'm like, you're going to make me a what? You know, like a bailiff. Because I'm going to take, we're going to take Don Vega and we're going to make him a judge. And you're going to come out to the ring and go, hear ye, hear ye, to Honorable Don Vega. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm not doing that shit. <laughs> he goes, I, you mean under the hood? He goes, no, no, you take the hood off. We're going to do it like, we'll get your hair in the blue. I'm like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? You fucking high? Oh, wait. Yeah, I'm like, don't maybe. do that shit. <laughs> He's like, oh, it's going to be great. You're going to get booking from me. You know, Vince is going to call you. I'm like, you're fucking stupid. Shut up. I'm like, and I thought he was just... Fucking ribbing yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Never book me again. Yeah. <laughs> Never book me again. I'm like, you're a fucking idiot. You think I'm going to go out there after 17 years of me wrestling the way I'm wrestling to go out there with a fucking blue shirt and blue pants and shoes talking about, here you, here you, Don Vega. Yeah. Fuck you. You done lost your mind. Go snort some more coke, you fucking retard. You fucking dope. Oh, man. You, know, you need to talk to, um, speaking of spot, you need to talk to um, Zach Carter. Oh, yeah, Zach yeah. Carter's got a great story about him and Rikishi. Oh, the sword story? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've heard the sword story. I'm going to cut you, you mother. He's a nut. That dude, everybody that's anybody has to have a spotter story. Oh, yeah. Everybody has, has and everybody has a spotter impersonation, too. Oh, yeah, everybody does. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Everybody. We're in the locker room with the ice and that show with, with, with Slaughter. And um, the best one that does it is... Um, Danny Davis. Yeah. <laughs> Danny Davis does it great. He's like, hey, she you cocksuckers. And we're all in the locker room. In the locker room, we had a split locker room. So there's like a door. It goes in the locker room. Yeah, yeah. It goes in the bathroom. So spot, we're all chit-chatting, bullshitting. Of course, we're making fun of him. He comes walking in the locker room. And it's dead silent. And he's like... So we come, he walks through the other door. And he leaves. As soon as he walks through the door, Danny Davis, ah, hey, she you cocksuckers. <laughs> all of a sudden, the door opens and he pops his head out. He's like... Yeah, I know you fucking guys are talking about me. I fucking know. You guys work for me, you know. He closes the door. Dead silence for a couple of seconds. All of a sudden, he's like, you guys know you work for me. And Danny Davis going out again. Here he comes, popping his fucking head out. He goes, you guys need to stop talking shit. Kenny Phoenix, I fucking know you. You need to stop that shit. He closes the fucking door again. Here he goes again. And he goes in the bathroom one night. And they lock the door in the bathroom on him. And now there's like five guys standing in the bathroom. like, Fuck you! You're in the bathroom now. <laughs> Just, <yeah. laughs> oh my god, it was great. He's like, you can hear him yelling down the hallway. He's like, it's not <laughs> funny, <laughs> guy. Cockstuck, you guys work for me. He's like, that's why Ric Flair is where he is. I'm like, nigga, you don't know Ric Flair. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Fucking guy, he's not your valet oh, guy. You don't lost your mind. Uh, this business is too much fun. <laughs> it's too much fun. Jose, it's man, much, man, it's been an honor having you on. Yes, man. it was I, fun. This was fun. I really I appreciate you coming down, dude. I mean, we, we've been talking about doing this for a little while now. Yeah. And finally, I mean, we seen you last night, and it was like, we need to get this done. Yeah, and that was good. No, I'm glad. It, it, it's, this actually worked out well that it happened after the fact. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't sure if it actually was going to take place after seeing how you looked after the match. I, I don't look sure any better. <laughs> <laughs> if you're, yeah, you're going to be able to walk today. Yeah. So I'm, I'm glad you made it out. Uh, I'm, I'm glad we I'm made it out. I'm pleasantly surprised that I'm not as broken as I thought it was going to be. I was a little skeptical when it came, when I took the back bump from the corner and landed on the, on the barbed wire one night. Yeah. I was really scared I was going to rip my back up on that one. Um, yeah. I got a couple of scratches here and there. Um, I definitely got a big scratch on my face. Yeah. <laughs> um, a little bit. I was walking around with a pad on my face for like pretty much all day. And I still went to work. I didn't get to bed until 3 o'clock this morning. <laughs> went to dinner afterwards and I didn't get to bed until 3 o'clock. So it was like, oh, 
fuck. Yeah, see, seeing you after the match, I was gonna, I said goodbye to you or whatnot. I was going to remind you of the podcast, and then you were just sitting there all bloody. And I'm like, I'm sure he has a lot of other stuff on his <laughs> mind right now. I'll, I'll just say my goodbyes. So, yeah, I'm glad everything worked out. It was, it was pretty awesome, very informative, and uh, people got to learn some stuff about you that they didn't know. And uh, thank you, personally, uh, from Monster Mac and uh, from Trinity Number 1. Yeah, thanks, man, for having us in your house. And, uh, no, this mansion. Yeah, the mansion. This this property. It's a, it's an estate. We had we had. There was a long driveway. We had to drive up to the door. Literally, <laughs> giant. But thank you, man. I uh, get paid well in the Indies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, I'd like Not. to have you on. Maybe um, we're gonna do a brick house one on his own. But maybe the two of you together just to talk That'd specifically. Be awesome. Just talk about the brick house. That'd and be awesome. Jose Feud. That would be uh, That would be tremendous. Let him do do your single. Yeah, we'll with do him. his one. Yeah. We'll have you guys on. That would be uh, that would be there. We'll set it up. and We can do something up yeah. closer that way. Yeah, so it's cool, man. Yeah, yeah. We, 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 we meet we, halfway. We're down there. Yeah, we can meet in the middle somewhere. I like that idea. That'd be that'd be cool. Awesome, man. Awesome. That'd be cool, cool stuff. Thank you, Jose. Uh, thank you, everybody, for listening. Uh, remember, always check out the com. We got new episodes. I don't want to say every week, but we get like two a month. Generally, bang these bad boys. <laughs> it's not every week. That's not every other week. <laughs> it's bi-weekly. <laughs> occasionally, we get a little. Uh, They're a little bi. <laughs> yeah, just a, just a tad. <laughs> occasionally, we'll we'll get crazy and we'll have a third one in there every month. So, but uh, check out the com. Subscribe on iTunes and Stitcher and rate it. Do all those things. And if you guys are fans of uh, of wrestling in general, please just support independent wrestling. Absolutely, that's it's, my main thing. Just support wrestling, whether it's in a small hall or a big arena. Because guess what? Those are the guys at some point you're going to see on TV and be cheering for or booing for or, you know, whatever. And when you're at a show, too, don't sit on your hands, man. No. Enjoy it. If you feel be the, loud. If, yell. If you scream. Feel, slam if you the feel, chairs. They, they, need, they need reaction. If you feel you're not getting your money's worth, you let them know you're not getting your money. You tell Boo, them. You, hiss. You, you do something. Get a reaction. Because trust me, they'll give it back to you. They will give it back to you a hundred times over. They're going to appreciate that. You're going to make it that much more. And those guys, like I said, they work hard. Support them. Buy their T-shirts. Buy a ticket to the show. You know, buy them beer at the end of the night. They work hard. You know, obviously as long as they're over twenty-one. Of course, of course. <laughs> so I, I guess I you can't say it any better than that, ladies and gentlemen. Support indie wrestling. Thank you, Jose, very much, man. Everybody, have a good night. <laughs> <laughs>